Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for guys for joining us for the first edition of this year's State of the Jungle War Room, Episode 1, featuring the original crew of State of the Jungle. Ooh. As the weeks go on, we'll have people join us live in the War Room. Guys, I'm excited for this to be back. Mm. Uh, we, we do this. This has become now an annual thing for us, which we'll be doing and we'll be going through leading up to the NFL draft for the Cincinnati Bengals making their selection. For those of you who aren't familiar with the war room, this is going to be different, right? It's not like your standard mock draft. We are going to wear the cap of general manager, front office personnel. We're going to debate. It's going to get heated. We're going to stand on the table for our guys. We'll make cases for our picks, and we want you guys to act as our scouts. We want you guys to act as our scouts and stand on the table. Maybe there's a guy on the board that we aren't talking about that you guys believe that we should be talking about. See, the thing about State of the Jungle, it's a show for the people by the people. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to really jump into this and you know wear the GM cap once again this year. But before we jump into State of the Jungle, before we go through and we <clears throat> give all of our picks, do us a favor, give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss when we go live or upload content from the First Star Logistics Studio. Remember, State of the Jungle will simulcast it on First Star Media Group's YouTube channel as well as the Sit Down with Leak Rights YouTube channel. With that being said, boys, uh, we're going to jump right into it. We are now going to take off of the cap as host of the most electrifying Bengals show, mm -hmm. which is State of the Jungle. We're now going to act as the front office of the Cincinnati Bengals. So we appreciate all of you guys for joining in. A lot like we do each and every single week. Still drop your questions down in the comment section. Join in on the discussion because without you guys, the show is impossible. So with that being said, boys, mm -hmm. Bengals got the 18th overall pick. Come on, so, right? Woo! 18th overall pick. Will we make a trade? I have no idea. Will we fight and bicker about a certain prospect or two? Yes. Say it again. Fuck yeah. hundred percent. It's going to happen, right? That's the whole thing about this whole state of the jungle thing. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Daniel is going to be running the ones and twos Ooh. and getting us started. Hopefully I don't mess up again. In front yeah. of the camera this time. Daniel. So, 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 so do, we think, do we think Caleb Williams is going to be the first overall pick or what? Yeah. 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 Yes, I think, I think that's right. Yes, I, I yes, think yes. The, the the generational hype of overblown pro like can't miss prospects is mm -hmm. definitely overblown. But I, I think he's hands down the number one quarterback. I agree. Prospect. I agree. All right, right let's we jump, ready? Let's jump into it. All right, into the draft. All right, don't mess up here, folks. Okay. All and right. We're gonna start. We're gonna be using PFF's uh, mock draft simulator as well. So start it. Let me know if we want to pause. All right, you can take a seat. All right, Caleb profit. Williams. Is the first guy off the board. Jaden Daniels, Daniels goes to Daniels favorite player. All the Drake May Drake talk. May. Drake May goes to the Patriots. Marvin Harrison. Good this is pretty standard good. so far, right? Malik so Neighbors five. Yeah, that's a good pick for the Chargers. Joe Alt. So, mm -hmm, Joe Alt. Okay. Alton okay. Giants. Okay. Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner. Okay. Okay. Huab is still the. Oh, well, he got picked uh, by the Falcons. Okay. Boston uh, got picked. The edges are falling. Yeah. Well, Roman Dunes at the right. Jets. Yeah. Good pick mm -hmm. them. JJ McCarthy. McCarthy. Mm -hmm. I like that landing spot for him. This is something that I've talked about a scenario that I really see on draft night unfolding is that there are a lot of talented yeah. offensive yeah. players, and that could push a lot of really good mm -hmm. defensive players yeah. down the board. Whether that yeah. falls to the Bengals or mm -hmm. it's the mid teens, I think you're going to see a lot of these guys, Jared Verse, Byron Murphy, fall into the teens before teams are really looking to get them off the board. Mm -hmm. Now, if we scroll down, let's scroll down before we're a couple, we're about three picks before the Bengals pick. Let's get some of the names that are, you know, got picked already, right? Um, 
you know, one thing that I'm going to, I guess I'll say right now, that's kind of piquing my interest. Yep. There's a guy we all know that I love. It's not necessarily a pressing need right now, but he's sitting there as a, a potential ad, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a guy like Jared Verse right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a guy right now that we're looking at that um, that might be on the board, right? Because you got, you got your pick of the two defensive tackles still on the board. You got Jared Verse as of right now still on the board. Um, I don't know if there's a guy that I'm trading up for right now. No, no, I think because too you, many I mean, options. Too many options. I mean, Mims is still there. Mm -hmm. You look at both defensive tackles are still there. Obviously, I mean, some of the offense tackles, Alt's gone. Fuag is a guy, you know, a lot of people like. Yeah. Uh, Fashano's gone, but you still have some offense tackles. And Bowers. Um, Brock Bowers is still available, but I would not be trading up for Brock Bowers. No. You only have three more picks. I see a lot of talent still on the board, Malik. All right. Let's get, let's resume it and see what happens. All right. What we got, Andy? <laughs> see Brock. Yep, there he goes. Brock, Brock Bowers, Bowers goes Colts. to the Colts. Thank you. Jared, Jared Verse. Verse. All right. And now the Jaguars. The Jaguars. Lots of. Lots of. All right. So we're okay. on the clock. The Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock. All right. So I'm going to listen to you guys' case as to who you guys think we should take here. Let's hopefully think, you know, see if we can come to an agreement. I'll tell you right now, Marius Mims is a guy that is sitting here, right? Obviously, he yeah. is a prospect. People love the upside. They like what he could potentially bring. Uh, to the table for the team, but I want to hear from you, Logan. Logan, who's your guy? Oh man, I, I think I think you're obviously looking at in in the interior here on the defensive line. You have Murphy and you have Noon. I think those are guys we've been looking at throughout the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're, you know if we're going to consider the offensive line, I still like Fontano a lot here as well, mm -hmm. considering he can come in and he can start our guard right now. He can go play tackle next year. He can come in and just truly upgrade your line right now to where you know Mims kind of can too, but he's not going to play guard this year. He's just way Way too big yes. for that. It seems to be our theme. Um, but I think I'm leaning one of the two defensive tackles here, Murphy or Newton. I mean, they grade out pretty similarly all across the board. And I, I think that's where I'm I think that's where I'm leaning right now is one of the two big DTs falling in our lap here. Yeah, when I look at it, I mean, just looking at everything else, Jackson Powers, Johnson, Graham Barton, I'm good. I think, you know, we talked about this interior offense lineman. Yeah. I think they're great talents. I think you're gonna have a lot more depth at the interior offense lineman spot in yes. round three, rounds four. I think you made a great point. Right now, the conversation with O-line is literally, are you going for the big offensive tackle, Mims, who has the potential? Or are you going for a guy like uh, Fatanu, who's, you know, very versatile? If it were me, if it were me, I, li I like Fatanu if you're looking at offensive line. That's not counting defensive line. In my opinion, I think you have too good, too much talent to pass up on, on Murphy or Newton. For me, I'm looking at those two guys, best player available. I'm looking at those two guys, but if you like the offensive line, I love the versatility of Fatanu because you can slide him in yep. right away. You know, you can have a competition with Cordell yep. Volson. With Mims, you don't know that most likely not. It's him or Trent Brown yep. for the offensive tackle. So um, if it's me, I'm looking at the two DTs. Evan, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I think I'm a little surprised to see Fatanu fall to uh, the Bengals at this point. And I mm -hmm. think that's definitely the one that's kind of like looking at you in the face like, hey, you should probably pick this really good player yep. that fell into your lap. Um, I, I am going to use this as an opportunity to just kind of clarify something that I feel like is uh, not talked about enough when it comes to Amarius Mims. Uh, where's 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 my camera here, Marissa? I want to make sure I'm addressing the audience here. This one. Hello, everybody. OK, um, so with Mims, I, I know the injury stuff is concerning to some people, and that's completely fair. Um, allow me to just play Twitter doc here for a quick second. Um, Obviously, there's a difference between injuries that happen consistently, soft tissue, nagging injuries that just seem to pop up all the time and practice over nothing, right? Then there's injuries where you land on your elbow wrong and it snaps in two, or someone rolls into your ankle and they're 300 pounds, and so you obviously get hurt because your joint can't support that. Yeah. So that's where the initial injury came from for his ankle, right? It's funny, I was just talking to a uh, spine and orthopedic specialist just a couple weeks ago about something similar with backs and ankles where... Uh, she was telling me that ankle injuries like spraining your ankle or having throwing your back out with back spasms, like these are the things that after injury up to six months or a year, your risk of re-injury to that same thing is significantly increased. So to see him have another ankle injury to that ankle doesn't necessarily to me mean Not surprising. it's a recurring issue that's going to be yeah. a problem throughout his entire career. I hear he had a severe ankle injury and then wasn't 100% healed and re-injured it doing something highly athletic that was demanding a lot of strength yeah. and power. The other thing is too, I know people are worried about the hamstring. Well, he was running the hamstring at the 40 or at the combine. Um, this is actually a really interesting thing with, we know he had the tightrope surgery on his ankle. 
If you look mm -hmm. at NFL players who have recently had tightrope surgery, oh, Cooper Cup, tightrope procedure in November of 22, had a hamstring strain in August of 23. Amari Cooper, tightrope procedure January of 21, hamstring strain that October. Zach Moss, tightrope procedure January 21, hamstring strain in August of 21st. Ben Skronek, tightrope procedure in fall of 19, hamstring strain in September 20th. Tua Tagovailoa, tightrope procedure December 18th, hamstring strain June 19th. So there is a history or a trend nice. of these players getting these tightrope injuries and before they're fully healed, injuring their hamstring. Now, if we had problems with Zach Moss or Tua or Amari Cooper having severe ankle injuries or pulling their times, no, we haven't. Have they had other nagging injuries? Yes. But I think it's fair to say that in the MIMS conversation that there's a difference in the in the severity we maybe need to place on the medicals. I don't think it was like, oh, he had three separate injuries. I think it's one injury that caused all of these issues. So I just wanted to at least say my part there. Yeah. So I appreciate everybody's input here and what, uh, what we're looking at. But um, I think that uh, – I think Jerzon Newton has to be the pick here, guys. Yeah. And the reason why I think Jerzon Newton has to be the pick here is we've been trying to solve the Geno Atkins – uh boy that was left since he mm -hmm. you know left cincinnati um since right yeah. dj reader was great right but i think there has been a, a high uh a high focus on you know nose tackle which you understand yeah. obviously but like when you get a guy that can do it all when you get a guy that can rush the passer when you get a guy that can stop the run and a guy that's truly has the ability to be dominant right mm -hmm. i feel like you, you have to grab him yeah. To me, the conversation is simple. It's between Byron Murphy and his Jerzon Newton here. Yeah. And it's about who do you like more? Mm -hmm. It's about who you like more. If the Bengals hadn't signed Trent Brown at this point, are you making are you are you looking at a different pick? Or are you saying that the value of these players if by we, themselves? If we, if we haven't? If Trent Brown has not been signed at this with, point with us, right now, yes, with the yeah. Bengals. If he's just out there on the free agent market right now, the Bengals haven't signed him. Is that influencing how you address this pick? Or are you saying, hey, this is the draft and we get good players? I, I think that. I would probably feel this way regardless if he was sitting here because with you. a talent with you. and Marius Mims who you like is still staring you right in the face. I think that Jerzon Newton is a guy that I feel like we'd be kicking ourselves if we didn't pass up on because it's a need, mm -hmm. but the value is also there as yeah. well right now. Yeah. And for me, I just don't know if I can um I don't know if I would be if I can co-sign any other pick and yeah. it makes sense yeah that makes and, sense. and if you're looking at a two from the fu whole future standpoint we need a we need a guy in the middle of the defense yeah i mean we obviously just signed sheldon rankin that's a two-year deal this is last year bj hill's deal and then we got nothing we already have nothing those are the only two people on the roster that you know have continuously produced mm -hmm. so you need a focal point you need a building block in the on the defensive side of the ball in the interior and that's exactly yeah. what you know newton can provide for us Right. Now, it feels like there's a significant drop off in tackle and kind of generally offensive line talent as you get into the second and third round. Does that make you a little bit unnerved or just a little bit hesitant? Which position? First? Uh, oh, like tackle, particularly. Well, there's a guy that I love later in the draft. That okay. I feel like I feel very good about because if we're drafting, yeah. we're talking about drafting yeah. a right tackle of the future. Mm -hmm. That said, right tackle that you draft right now is not going to come in and, and beat out a guy like Trent Brown for the starting job. Right no, now. I think but, you're just looking for a guy no. who can play your right. swing tackle a little so, better than Cody Ford. I, and I think that's why you go out there and you uh, you make the move that you that you have made. I do want to see one thing before yep. we move on because I feel like we've been on this for a yes. little bit. Uh, take me to wide receiver horse. Yep. Just take me for wide receiver. Click that other team. You're good. Um, Brian that. Thomas Jr. staring me in the face, man. Yep. <sighs> He, he's good. He's good. I think the, di the the difference in the discussion with Brian Thomas is uh, I just look at these names. What what quality wide receiver are you getting in the third round, and what's the drop? What's the delta? Yeah, what's yeah, the difference 100%. between Brian 100%. Thomas to wide receiver 100%. ten? Mm -hmm. When I mean, just well, speaking for like pretty, PFF, yeah, I think Thomas is have, that good. It's honestly bigger than you may it, think. If you do go out and get Thomas, that is your quote unquote T against the place. He is a guy I yeah. can see being a surefire wide receiver two, potentially even, you know, later in his career being a top 20 wide receiver. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people, the negative thing would say, Oh, he played with Malik neighbors. He also flashed at times more than Malik. He neighbors, led the you know, nation and touchdowns. The yes. only problem like, I have is 
PFF, just as a point of what we have pulled up right now, has 21 receivers ranked in their top 100 players. Yep. You are not getting that at defensive tackle, and you are not getting that at offensive tackle. We know there's no. plenty of receivers who have good traits mm -hmm. who you can say, we need you to play this role. We need you to play the Tyler Boyd role. We need you to play the T. Higgins role. And these are guys that you can get later that – the difference between him and Brian Thomas might be 10%, but the difference between Jerzon Newton and, I don't know, Chris Jenkins, mm -hmm. that's that's big to me. That is. And that's, so that's, that's DT1 that to I'll, like three. Right. And that's the difference is, yeah, you're talking the difference between wide receiver four and wide receiver 15 is minimal, but the difference between DT2 and DT5 is massive. Yeah. Um, as much as I like Brian uh, Thomas. Thomas Jr., mm -hmm. I think I'm going to uh, – oh, man, this is tough. Here Trust the gut, yes. man. I, I think, I think I'm, I think I'm going to uh, – we're going to go with Jerzon Newton. Yeah, okay. I think, I think yeah. Jerzon Newton has to be the pick. So. We send in the Locking pick. Locking it in. Lock it in. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to send in the pick, and maybe maybe Mike Brown will fire me tomorrow. We're, <laughs> uh, we're going to go with Jerzon Newton as our pick. So. All right, Jerzon Newton, the pick. Clap it up, folks. Oh. And listen, let me just say – Let's pause real quick on yeah. this afterwards, though. After this, because I want to talk with you guys about something. Troy Fontenew, Fontenew, Fontenew goes uh, right, right after him. I paused that um, thing in half a second too. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I like the pick. I like, I like the pick. Uh, but I have a question. Yes. Uh, not trading with the Steelers, right? We're not doing that. But mm. I got a little think bit of trading of up. I got a little bit of an itch right now to trade up. I do. Really? I've got a little bit of itch to trade up right now. Last year we, we we were very standard when it came to our board, man. But yeah. uh, you know, it's I guess the question I guess I want to ask is: Do we see any upside with us making a placing a call to maybe the, either the Dolphins or the Eagles? And uh, so here's my question to you yeah. before we do that. Yeah. Because obviously there's a lot of late round picks, but mm -hmm. you're going to have to give up some of your top 100 picks here. Yeah. But not the Bengals, Bengals first next year, right? Honestly, the, you're going to need a lot to trade up from the back end of the second round mm -hmm. to the middle of the first mm -hmm. round. That is probably going to cost you future second and third, or yeah. third this year and second yeah. next year. So, or a player for, for a team that needs to get cheaper, that needs to get younger, that needs more starter capable players. I don't know that giving up those premium top 100 picks is something that I feel great about, especially if you have to give up multiple picks for a guy, because we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. just in the nature of the aggregate, if Daniel and I have two people and we, we can dig a trench, it doesn't matter how good Malik is at digging trenches. We have two people yeah. doing it. So it's hard for the value of one person to exceed the value of two players to your team. Even if those players are just like, B tier players and yeah. you're trading up for a and, B tier player. And you're also, I mean, the only other thing you can consider to kind of move up is, you know, we have the whole T Higgins trade request too. That's something we can float around here mm -hmm. and these next couple of picks as well. I mean, if you're looking at the board, it's probably not going to be the, the Dolphins or the Eagles or the Giants, but you get to like 27 with Arizona. You know, if there's a player we still like there, then maybe you can start considering it then. But it's is a little, it's a a little rich. That's player. the thing. Who are you? Who are you? Yeah. Who are you looking at the board and like, so who's your itch that you're I, itching up I, for? I, I, I want to do something really quick with yeah. you. I want to, I want to contact the, uh, I want to contact the Eagles. Philadelphia. I want to contact Philadelphia. Um, yep. For 22. Well, let me ask you, is it regard, like, is your player 100% going to be there at 22 or are the Steelers or Dolphins going to take him? You know, like, are you going to make the trade now? Or are we going to wait till he's on the clock, on the clock, we're itching to make a move? We can see, we can see. Okay. By the way, guys, we know they have multiple third round picks. That is not getting you from pick 50, what, yeah. what pick is it? Pick 49. 50, 49 to pick 17, yeah. 18. I understand something. I'm only making a trade if, it, if we're fleecing. You know, I'm, 1, I'm, I'm not well, that's, You're, you're going to have to pay to get up into the first well, round because well, you're talking see, about the fifth year option, right? That most, a lot of teams really value. 100%. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to resume real quick. Well, remember, you're going to have to have a quick trigger finger. You're going to have to have some Twitter I'll, I'll, fingers. Oh. He's gone. Pause. Press pause. Our worst nightmare comes okay. to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Really, okay. <laughs> is that who Very you're trying to trade up for? Very short-lived oh, yeah, dream uh, there. Again, man, I where Brian Thomas can dream. be an excellent player, but is Brian Thomas worth the next best yeah. receiver and a second-round pick? I, yeah. Honestly, That's I think tough. if we're looking to trade up, I would be looking, honestly, even early second round, mm -hmm. to, to be honest. If there's, yeah. if there's guys, I would look like – I mean, once we get to the second round, we can look. I would be looking to – Potentially move up in the second round, um, but want me to resume? Well, let, let's talk more about our pick. Let's talk more yes. about our pick. Let's let's keep it going. The wild, wild, wild. Yeah, I feel really good about Jerzon Newton, guys. Yeah, 
I, I feel I feel uh, I feel really good about Jerzon. Byron Murphy to the Dolphins. Byron Murphy goes to the Dolphins, so they get their replacement for Christian Wilkins. Good. But I feel good about Jerzon Newton, man. Mm. I think we finally answer our defensive tackle issue yeah. that we've had for quite some time. You got to feel good about it, right? I think mm. you you get the disruptor. You talk about adding a guy like Sheldon Rankins in the offseason. You, you still have BJ Hill, so you've literally recreated the Larry Okunjobi, uh BJ Hill tandem there. Mims to the your, Bills. You get Mims mm. to the Bills. It's a good pick for them. Mm-hmm. Jacks Powers Johnson to the to the Lions. Yeah. Cool. Kool-Aid Bills to the Ravens. Okay. I, like I mean, like, guys. like some of these moves have That's made sense, you know. But all in all, you've got to feel good about uh you, you gotta feel good about yeah. the Jerzon new pick. I think yeah. that puts us in a good spot in terms of the defensive line. I'd be honest with you guys, I'm still considering an edge at some point in the draft. Yes. Uh, if a difference Absolutely. maker is there, you know, we, Absolutely. We, uh, because I think that that's a spot we definitely need juice from. And I don't think that there's anybody currently on our roster to where I'm saying, Hey, i I'm good with passing up on X, Y, Z because we've got Joseph, Joseph Osai, Osai, Sam Hubbard. Or right. Cam <laughs> let, let me just say, cause everybody, you know, we got pe- some people saying Byron Murphy, of course, Byron Murphy is a great pick. In my opinion, I think Jerzon Newton was first off, undoubtedly the more productive college player. He was way more productive. He didn't have a guy like Tavondre Sweat right next to him. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys can look at some of these highlights. He is getting double teamed. Mm-hmm. You go look at opposing uh, offense coordinators. They are talking about Jerzon Newton mm-hmm. because he is the guy who was wrecking defenses. He, and honestly, my favorite part about him is his pursuit and his effort. Honestly, mm-hmm. I love seeing him rally all the way to the weak side to go get the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And for me, effort he that's something hard. I, he he yes. is out there. Hitting. Yeah, when he's on, uh, he's one of the. He's, I mean, obviously, like you look for traits, you look for attributes and players. He's one of the few people on the defensive side of the ball in this draft that can truly just take over a game. And you've seen it time so, by time. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, I want you to keep going. But when I look at him, we can cross off defensive tackle off our board. But I will say there, there's nothing. Stopping I'd like to me. get another one. Here to be honest, there's nothing from stopping me in the second round. If Devondre Sweat is potentially sitting there, I like that option. Hey, how about the Texans at 42 who just traded away a bunch of picks last year to move up in the draft and get Will yeah. Anderson? Yeah, I like Rick Shaw. So if yeah, we want to like – let's see. If, if Devondre Sweat isn't gone by the time the Texans go to pick, let's see if we can pause it and maybe work out a deal to move up a couple yeah. spots. The Packers got – We've also um, – and we already we just traded them to Joe Mixon okay. too, so we just clearly some we, – Can I have a good question here? Was yes. anybody – because we, we have an unhappy scout on the team who we probably should fire at this point. But <laughs> we've got a guy yeah. by the name of Eric Lewis uh, says, you guys should vote instead of Malik just choosing. I thought we all pretty much took a vote yeah. there. We yeah. were all in unison with the jersey on. Did anybody yeah. dislike that? No. I, I think Evan was I think talking I'm the only about person. Mims. Yeah, so I, I'm just trying to – throughout this whole process, like we you are going to, to be picking good opinion. players 100%. in the first round, right? But 100%. I – and part of my role on this show is to play devil's advocate, right? To say, what if, or have you considered this? And so when I was yeah. asking Malik, hey, how do you feel about the drop-off and tackle depth? This is something that you need to consider when we're making these picks, and it's something the Bengals are considering, which is why we're all talking about it, because these are conversations mm-hmm. that are likely being had right now in terms of positional value, where they do this exercise, and they mm-hmm. run through these picks, and they say, okay, we took you know, Fontenot in the first round, and then mm-hmm. – Second round, are what right are now. our D-line picks? Yeah. What, what yeah. do we have available? And then they, they do like the it. opposite, where they say, we'll take yeah. Newton. I, what do we have in the second round? And I, so it's I, just an exercise. I guys. think that's how you get leaks in the, uh, in the yeah. scouting room when you get unhappy scout members. Yep. And they're saying, oh, I want to touch and touch and blah, 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 blah. Well, look, you know, I scouts agree. look at the same player and see two different things sometimes. Yeah. But mm-hmm. ultimately, everyone's on the same team. Everyone's trying to make sure the team wins. Like, you know. We may disagree a little bit, but at the end of the time, like if everybody else feels good about mm-hmm. the pick, like I like Jerzon Newton a lot. I just I look at the D line depth later, and I like it a lot better than I do the tackle depth. And that's you. just me personally. I hear you, man. I, I there's a there, there's a guy I might win you over with later on, but uh, we're mm-hmm. texting on the clock. Keep going. So right here, we're this we're Evan wants to consider. Do you want to just try and ride out these seven picks and see if Devondre Sweat there? I I think I personally or do you want to trade up. I think there? I personally would just because it, I mean, what what would it take to move up in your opinion? Mm, probably one of the third round because picks. I don't yeah. I don't feel like I want to do that to me just because we're already going to be so tight on the cap with paying Joe paying mm-hmm. Jamar paying T you need as many top 100 picks as you can get if you can and, this is, and this is the first the year we've had multiple mm-hmm. top 100 picks and I want to truly be able to take advantage of that like I said if we can I use agree. You know, even even the future stuff, two, I don't care. Two but like, fourths and a six yeah, would get yeah, it done. You know, yeah, maybe you know, that's something but like I, I would ride it out, I think. Here, no, that's fine. Let's take I a think ride. ride it out. Here. Yeah, let's ride it out. Let's ride it out. Uh, yeah, all right. Let's see what they do anyway. He might even make it to us anyway. He might. He might. Tyler Newbin, that's a good gift for the Texans. Mm-hmm. Sand oh, good gift for the Falcons. Guy, okay. Good that's gift for the Falcons. Like, Penix, that's, that's a good fit. That's a good fit. That's a good fit. Grady Pauls, Keon Coleman, Xavier. Yeah, come on, two more. Bo Nix. That's a good value for them. Mm-hmm. 
You're on You're the spot right. as well. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. I mean, anybody jumping out at you guys right away? Uh, I know somebody Malik is going to be looking at a little bit. I know. Right I know. I'm interested. I feel, like, I feel like we all might be on different people here. Yeah. I feel like we all might be on different people here. Wait, keep scrolling down. Let's scroll, yep. scroll down. You got the wide receivers. You got the wide receivers. Chris Jenkins is a good pick. Did Tavon, did Tavondre Sweat already go, or does no, he just lower down the down. PFF board? Okay, he's low. He's right there okay, yeah, they've got him low on that board. Seventy-four. That would. I mean, if if obviously he went, I pick seventy-four. Wait, that's just six picks before our next pick. Too, right. By the way, so that's even something. To consider. So maybe that's something we look at there. third round and say, hey, yeah. maybe we can see the. That's why you can use your extra six, your extra seven. Thing. I mean, right. Chris Jenkins, another guy I like later. I don't, I, you don't like him. The 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 short arms concerns mm -hmm. me because it pops they're, up a lot with him. Where yeah. trying to disengage from blocks, rushing the passer, like I would I like. Just, I think I would like Jenkins more if we didn't draft Newton. I think because they kind of yeah. have some similar like flaws in the game. They're both a little smaller, mm -hmm. a little shorter arms. Honestly, oh, I yeah. think I think if you're looking at defensive tackle, I think I, I think, think we can you wait. can wait. I think we can wait. I was gonna say Chris Jenkins yeah. only had eight snaps in the A gap last season too, yeah. so not really a solution. Kind of no. yeah. Do, do me a favor. Yep. Let's go over a receiver. I want to see what's available. So. Yep. Now this is the sneaky up. pick, right? Is either you're looking at tackle if you feel good about where that class is, or you're looking at a receiver to add a and weapon. You, you right still now. could even consider a guy like Jatavion Sanders here at the tight end position as well. Yes. Ben Sinon as well. Like those are two. Everybody always talks about how we want to tight end in the future. This is a good opportunity to do that. As Jatavion well Sanders here. still there? I, Jatavion Sanders is. Still I, there. I believe so. Uh, I do like that. I do too. Man, you want to talk? If you're trying to add a weapon, that is adding a weapon, yep. right? All right. So who? Yep. who, who go, go, go to tackle for a second. Let's take a look at the tackles, and then I think we're going to be in a good shape to make I, our decision I, here. Mm. Like this. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stand on the table right now and tell yep. you guys, the guy that I really, really like, I don't know if I love him in the second round, is Blake Fisher. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about right. a guy that you are looking to plug and play and be that true right tackle of the future for you? Mm -hmm. It's him. He's a guy that you're going to have too. a hard time keeping off the football field. He's good in the run. He's good in the pass. He's a guy I feel really, really good about. Uh, I don't know if I just love this at – uh, at, yeah. at, in the second, very, but here's the thing early. though. It's a little early. Here's the thing though. Like you, unfortunately, we are picking. We're not like we're not, and we don't, we don't have top ten picks, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. in the in the second round, I you do yeah. have to ask yourself: Do you want to uh, find yourself in a situation in which you're overdrafting guys, or like? And yeah. I, I just don't know if I feel. I think that That's how you end up with Billy Price, right? Right. I think the I think the signing of uh, Trent Brown helped tempt that. Yeah. You know, having to make that decision yeah. right now. I, I know we're we're continuing with talking through it, but can you do me a favor? Yep. Can we go to edge rushers for a second? No. I want to go to edge and I want to go to corner. Yeah. Yep. I want to hear what you guys are thinking. Edge you got a lot of balls in here too. Peyton Will Wilson. Keeps I Peyton Wilson's one of Wilson's the, the, the best guys on guys. the board. But, uh, not for me. Not me. Not me. Like right. I, 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 no. And, and, and this is the part where this is really tough because your team is built such that you have now paid above average market value for both of your linebackers. Mm -hmm. You're not relegating either of them to the bench, no matter how good that Peyton yeah. Wilson might be right, right. now. So Here's that's why I just players. say not right now. These are edge players. Nothing and I'm not loving it either. I'm really what looking what at what wide receiver, doing? tight end, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing there. So if we if we feel good about mm, – mm. I, I mean, I do like Tyree Jackson yeah. a lot. I really do. But, again, it's a little bit rich yeah. here still, too, for me. I think this you're going to have some guys your, down, yeah, down This in the range draft. of corners is yeah. – This is ultimately your four-string corner, your third-boundary yeah. corner. Like, I, I feel like wide receiver and tight end can offer you something right now. And I, I mean, really, corner four plays a so, lot. So, but. so my assistant, you know, general manager here, Evan, uh, <laughs> I obviously was very high on the first pick that we made in terms of getting Jerzon Newton here. Yeah. I'll stand on the table, and I'll just tell you right now, man, I I understand that we might be drafting Blake Fisher. I just have a hard time seeing Blake Fisher being there for us in the third round when we come out when it comes time for well, us. something we can look for trading up, right? We got multiple yeah. third no, round picks. No, I'm, I'm, fourth I'm just, up. I'm, just I'm, I'm, I'm throwing this out there. I mm -hmm. just think that the uh, tight end position is not a situation in which Coach Taylor will want us to do because we, we <laughs> obviously went out. We signed Gesicki. Yeah, we went out there. We I, had brought in. We brought in. Um, we brought in. Um, Drew we brought Sample back Tanner, back Tanner Hudson. Brought yeah. back Drew Sample. I just don't know if those. If those moves necessarily make the most sense um scroll down for me daniel yep my, my point on that way, and the only reason i'm way. i'm banging uh, the table for that is because jadavian sanders basically moves like yeah. a wide receiver right yeah. and on top of that he plays in line right. so what have yeah. we been begging for a tight end who doesn't telegraph yeah. what the bengals are trying to yeah. do right I, jadavian sanders can line up in line and tear seams apart like he can do that he has the movement skills that no mm -hmm. other tight end has in I this agree. draft he has the size six four two forty five like you're not going to find another tight end in this draft that has the complete package, including mm -hmm. the production like he yeah. does. So right now, 
this is where the drop off happens. So if you want the wide receiver tight end, best of both worlds, right here is your guy. I don't hate it, Danny. What are you thinking here? What are you thinking here? Because there's, there's a guy I'm, I'm really excited about too. But Who? Who's your guy? I would feel good about wide receivers or tight ends. If if it, if, if if this is all in my control, I'm taking Zach Frazier here, okay. and I'm not even thinking twice about it. To be to be quite honest with you, I mean, I think he's clearly the second best center in the draft. He can come in and start immediately at any other guard positions we want. He can be your center of the future. He's you know he can be an end of the first round type of mm -hmm. player. And I, I just think, you know, it's a position of need. We want to beef up the offensive line. And, you're, you know, for this year, he's going to help you this year. He's going to yeah. help you next year. He's a true anchor in the middle. He's a wrestling champion. He does everything. He's got all those little details you want in a good Very offensive good lineman. Blocker, 90th yes. percentile just, blocker there's so the many good speed. things about him. I mean, obviously, he's their 31st ranked player, and we're sitting here at 49 looking at him. Right. And it's, like I said, it's and the position reason is probably need. positional value, right? Yeah. Because and, center guard is going to be farther yeah, down. Yeah. And you're looking at it, we have Volson, then, you know, Ted's a free agent next year. And I know we all love Ted, but the Bengals don't pay many people after 30, and he's going to be 33 this time next year. But we, yeah. we have to ask ourselves, guys, is this the best move? Like, is, this, is this the best guy on the board right now? Is this, is this yes. The, in my opinion. Regardless, I think of position, he's the best player available. Regardless of position, probably. But that's I think the problem again is when you're talking about. So the advantage of center, right, is you want a guy who's not going to mess up the snap, who can diagnose blitzes, <laughs> which is less important for a guy or an offense led by Joe Burrow who likes to do a lot of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't necessarily have to identify the mic every play. He doesn't necessarily have to set protections the way that Joe mm -hmm. might want to do it. However, they divide that responsibility, but usually you pair a veteran center with younger quarterbacks. I, I definitely think the value here is you compete immediately with Volson at guard, and then you can fill in next year. Um, I guess the question is, are you just trying to take the most talented player regardless of position, or are you trying to help the guy get the guy who helps you now this year the most, but also helps you in the future? I feel like you guys are waiting on me to make the call. Well, we haven't we haven't really heard your opinion too right. much outside we, we, of we Blake Fisher. Guy, we've got my guy, Daniel Malik. Who are who are you looking at this? So say? A couple of guys that I love. I, I there's think some that, fun guys um, here. Can I, guess I can one? be persuaded. I can be persuaded yeah. regardless. Mm -hmm. Is 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 Alabama boy Jermaine Burton somebody yeah. you're looking yeah. at? Jermaine Burton is definitely a guy that I'm looking at here, man. And I uh, I just think that he is a game changer. And I think um, he's a guy that can absolutely take this team over the top. But you know what's glaring, though? The mm -hmm. defense was the 31st ranked defense in the league last year. And Largely due to explosive plays allowed. 100%. 100%. Yeah. And so I, to me, I just think that getting younger at the position and really drafting – Guys, we can be sure of is like to me that Peyton, the fact that Peyton Wilson, Wilson is still yes. here, that's something I can't get over. I'm I can't, I, I can't get on board with this because linebacker, especially, is one of those positions that look at every first round linebacker for yep. the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like these guys are hard to pick as much as tight end sometimes. Yeah. And you can just consistently get guards, interior defensive linemen, linebackers in rounds three through five. The best ones come from that range mm -hmm. all the time. This is an opportunity to get a guy with special traits, and as good as that guy may be, he's not going to touch the field for three or four years because That's he's true. going to be playing That's the true. Akeem Davis Gaither role or just filling in, maybe on the occasional passing but down for Jermaine Pratt. The thing is, though, are we like, are we sure he wouldn't just be better than them? Well, again, like, then you're I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not I'm not I'm not saying no. that that's like what to do, but he is, might okay, just be better than First of all, do you think they're gonna bench Logan Wilson? No, no, no right. No, 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 so no, then no. you're talking Jermaine Pratt. So no. he has to be a better coverage linebacker than Jermaine Pratt consistently. He, Blue yeah. has to feel comfortable yeah, with that in the first two years. And then you're paying your backup linebacker eight million dollars. Mm -hmm. Those three factors make me feel like this is not a good fit for the team right now. And and a guy with some injury history as well. I feel like that, you know, that's another thing the Bengals don't typically right. like either. A lot of injury red flags there too, so I feel like mm, you know that yeah. kind of. Could I just can't get on board with taking yeah. one a linebacker this early, especially when you don't have a dire need. There. So I've got two things. Number one, if we're talking Wilson, the drop off between Wilson and the rest of the linebackers are is, is absurd. So if you're not going to go Wilson, then you're you're saying you're okay at the linebacker right. position. For me, and this is where like I am not a huge fan of this. Like I don't think this dude is a great player. But when we're looking at Tavondre Sweat, in my opinion, if you want a somebody I'm, who's I'm different, sold. you want somebody who is unique. I'm okay with doubling up, to be honest. You want to never worry about that interior I'm, defensive it, line it, rotation uh, for four I'm, years? Exactly. I'm with it. Because I'm with it. when I look at it, six foot four, 360 pounds, at the end of the day, I don't give a damn about doubling up. I would be looking at Tavondre Sweat, or if you want, Jermaine Burton. I also like Zach Frazier in the yeah. interior offense line. So in my opinion, it's between those three. Jermaine Burton at the wide receiver, 
If you don't go Burton, I think you're still going to have more wide receivers down the there line. There definitely still is. For sure. There definitely still is. I love Jermaine Burton. I Just before the show started going live, I called him Chris Olave without the fifth gear. Mm -hmm. uh, just a crazy, efficient separator at every middle to intermediate to deep level of the mm -hmm. field. I, but even saying that, I'm going to stand on what I said earlier, that the difference between the receiver you can get here and the one in the third round is, is not very big. Whereas, again, the difference between Sweat and some of these other talented interior defensive linemen is, is more significant. Yeah. All right. Um, I think uh, mm. GM Malik, ready I to make the pick? I'm ready to make the pick. All right. Oh. Break my heart. I'm he's excited. looking at me like he's about to break my heart. Let me just With exit up. The 49th pick Woo. in the 2024 NFL draft, we're going to select Zach Frazier. Okay. All right. We're going to select Zach Frazier. I love it. Obviously, I'm a big fan. I. I <laughs> You know, I, I understand the need for it. I understand yeah. why this is a pick. Jermaine Burton gone. Oh, Steelers. Wow, the Steelers. Oh, Brian right. Thomas. Brian <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Jermaine and, Burton. My heart. They need both of them, though. Let's be honest. Yeah. Roman yeah. Wilson, the Browns. Yeah. Roman Wilson, the Browns. So is there? I mean, we get two wide. We get two wide receivers going to uh, going to go. You know, going to um, Wilson. our division. You know, essentially, yeah. it's uh, means we're gonna need more corners, baby. Yeah. The Steelers <laughs> grab. The Steelers grab. Uh, Jermaine Burton, man. That, that, that's Sanders tough. of the Texans. Sanders of the Texans. That's Are we thinking one. about a trade-up for, uh, for Tavondre Sweat here at all, We've folks? Got to. I mean, that's... Uh, press pause. Please don't go. Let's... let's uh, I'll be honest. I mean, which team here would be most likely to well, trade up? I don't know if either of these two teams would trade. I don't know if the 49ers or Chiefs... Maybe the 49ers. The 49ers maybe. The 49ers do not have many... Oh, wait. Do they have many... Picks but the Panthers... If, if he makes it to the first pick of the third, Panthers? the Panthers... New new GM or new head coach, they could be kind of looking for some more assets yeah. and stuff there there as well. Yeah. But do we wait two picks? No. I mean, it's only I think I think if you get to the third round, I think you gotta look. You got trade multiple up. teams coming up right now with D line needs. Yeah. That's yeah. what's particularly the Cardinals because the Cardinals have swung and missed on a lot of D linemen yes. over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not willing to sit back and do what the Bengals do. Like this is new. This is new regime. So are we let's going make a phone call to the Niners. Okay. Let's offer them a, our third round, one of our thirds and our fourth. So we want sixty three. What do we want to start? with? I was going to say I don't. I don't want to start with that. Let's you don't start, want to start with that. Well, we always got to start with the low. <laughs> low, 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 low I was going to say how many picks? How, how many picks are we moving right, up? So we have we have eighty and ninety seven. Okay. Which one? We probably let's start with what? Ninety seven. Let's offer them ninety seven. Ninety seven and like one forty nine. I said that, 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 I'll say 194. And you can even throw in an, one of the Next sevens. Year, if you want to throw in one of the sevens, like just because these or guys are the probably six. not going to make the roster. Right? This, the is where you get, this is where you get your specialist, you your kick returner, your punter. Uh, I mean, they, they will not be accepted. Okay, so then just keep playing with it and see where it would get Next to. Six, or how about move up? No, we definitely want to move up the pick. Go, go, go to 80. I think I think if we go to 80 instead of 97. Likely be – oh, well, we got to take 97 off. So – 80 and I mean, we're getting a lot at this yeah. point. 80 and that's only 25. I mean, the price seems steep. Yeah. yeah. Unless you would, I mean, I don't even know if this would work, but 80 and 115 gets you up to 72. And maybe we can throw in a, you know, a later something. Well, let's see. Let's offer the trade and see if they accept. Yep. Let's see. Let's offer 80 and 115 to move up to 63. Not Ooh, exactly. no. Okay. So, um, what about a seven? Huh? What about a seven? Let's try to throw it in there. See what happens. the last one. This isn't quite Madden. You know, it doesn't move the bar as it, much it, as it, it moves it up here. 7%, <laughs> which is shit. Tell us all it takes. Yeah, yeah. No. You know, we, we offering offer it? it? We got it. Oh, we're on the clock. That extra seven. They were holding out. So, we sent them, we sent them our uh, 80th pick. Yep. Yep. Our, uh, we sent them a seventh rounder? And we sent them in 115. So, yeah, our fourth. Fourth. Okay. So, I feel good about that, right? Yep. Let's go on over to, and we still have a third still left. Yes. Okay. Let's go over to uh, defensive tackle to Bondre. I was going to say you're definitely going to want to take him before you get in this murderer row him. of the Chiefs, right. the Panthers. I like Bondre that a lot. I like being aggressive. I like that a lot. Yeah. I like that a lot. So That's we two people up, in the trenches. We moved up. We moved up. We got to Andre Sweat. Uh, by trading away our uh, fourth 80, round. 115 in a, a seven, I seven. believe. Yeah, yep. that's what we did. Uh, you know, you got to feel good about that. Yes. Move, right? Because then how, how how do you feel about your defensive line moving forward? The trenches Fixed. in general now, man. Strength. We had an strength. offensive line. Strength. Some dogs. Not just strength dogs. on the line, strength yeah, and depth. you got to like, feel good, man. You, 
Got to feel some good. Dogs. Got to feel good Someone it. said we no way we just trade up for a nose tackle. I mean, listen. It's a game changing nose yes. tackle. I want to I want to so say too that he played 200 snaps in the A gap. He's not just a nose tackle. Yeah. Like he's or I'm sorry, he had Blake Corbin was the Raiders. Wow, okay. Mm. Yeah. Tavondre Sweat had 57 snaps in the A gap. So he is not a pure nose tackle. Yeah, um, and, and you look at he's a thing. big dude. Look at, look, no. at how much, look at how much money Christian Wilkins just got. Look at how much money DJ Reader just got. And like he's this is like, a premier is position not, nowadays. This is not Damon Harrison. Like he has more oh. quickness. Like he has quick feet. Like Fisher. Quick Fisher, man. That breaks my heart, man. Hey, there's other tough. guys. Yeah. That breaks tough, my heart. Tough, tough, tough. I, I will say we're gonna we're gonna be set up here at 97 here soon. And our next pick is not till 149. Oh man goes to the Cowboys. Bucky Irving. Oh, Bucky Irving. Mm, love Bucky Irving, Irving too. Yeah. Yeah. Spencer Rattler, a little fun one there. Um, all right, we're coming up. We're about five picks away. Trey Benson just went. That's another running back we could have considered here. Brendan Rice. Brendan Rice, yeah. yep, the legend. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the legend is funny. <laughs> the legend. <laughs> Let's see more here. Picks. All right, to, we're about to be up. That's a good pick for the Chiefs. It is. Van Pran, that's a big pick. If I didn't get Zach Frazier in the second, I would have been telling us to draft Van Pran. But he's all gone. Right. Here we are. Here we are. And like I will say, we're at pick 97 here. We don't pick again after this pick until 149. So that I'm, is a big, yeah, big, a big, big, big. It's a so fi- 58 so pick. A couple of things like, I'll tell you right now. Marshawn Lloyd is a pick that I like. Running mm-hmm. back out of USC. Uh, I don't know if that's a move that you're making right now at this point. Um, he certainly won't be there when we pick again. Yeah. I, 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 being, I Sorry, go ahead. I, saying, I almost feel like, not that it's necessarily a bad thing, we've almost pigeonholed ourselves here into a tackle. Yeah, um, that, <laughs> we haven't drafted one yet, and there's still some solid ones. So don't like it's not like a crazy bad thing or whatever. Yeah, right. But. It would definitely be nice to get another guy in there, like a Deontay Smith, like mm-hmm. these guys, the project guys. You yeah, got is your project swing tackle? That there's you some solid there ones here too. So. Um, yeah, I, I really look at this. This is your last top 100 pick, so I really want to get an impact player. Yeah. I, I feel like this is your last chance Ooh. to get a guy that helps you this mm-hmm. year be a better team. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some solid tackles here. I mean, Pooney, who's you know, more of a guard. Big, more, some people think he's more of a guard. Yeah. Right. I, I agree. I mean, to I'm be clear, Christian let a guy fail a tackle before you move him to yes, guard. Yes, I'm a big Christian Jones yes. guy here. Christian big Jones. Christian Jones, Jones guy here. I mean, he's played two years of fully starting at right tackle, a two, oh, a year and a half at left tackle. You know, three and a half year starter, uh, nearly a thousand, almost two thousand snaps at right tackle, a thousand snaps at left tackle. Mm-hmm. Durable, played almost every game he's he's been able to play in. You know, Texas kind of runs that that quick game RPO offense kind of similarly to to us here in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. I think it's a pretty good fit. You know, he obviously needs to develop a little bit, but you know what? We just signed Trent Brown. Yeah. So, like, he's allowed to sit and learn behind these, these offensive linemen. He's allowed to develop a little bit. But worst case scenario, if Trent Brown goes down, we know he can be a solid plug-and-play option at, honestly, right or left tackle. So, I think that holds some value there as well, too. Kevin, you said you made a statement. You said you would want to get an impact player here. So yeah, let's you. let's go ahead and look at the board just uh, as it stands right now. See what we got left. Um, oh, gosh, are you looking at the defensive line right now? I'm looking so, at Mike Hall. Okay, oh, yeah. So God. here's here we're we're gonna go ahead while we're here real quick. <laughs> let's talk about. Hall, I'm not a fan of it. Let's um, talk about Michael Hall, and I want to talk about more importantly Dwayne Carter because if you don't get DeAndre, if you don't get Devondre but, Sweat, but, right? But but hear me out though. At this point, we we can't even consider those guys no i just want to like wax poetic about him real quick is if you are looking for a nose tackle option fill in defensive line option later in the draft if they don't go newton early if they don't go sweat (laughs) early and you're talking about a guy that you have in Dwayne carter the guy is older but he's already got a good bull rush he's already got pass rush moves Mm -hmm. he's strong versus the run and can hold up double teams the worst thing i can say about him is that he has a bad shuttle and three cone, which I don't really care if my defensive I, I, line. I believe, I believe he was the first three-time captain in Duke football. Three-time captain. What do we know about the Bengals and how they love people <laughs> in the mid rounds that were team captains? But, so but whatever, we've already drafted. Yeah, him. right. But 320 <laughs> snaps of nose tackle in his career, so he's played that position. So yeah. as a mid-round guy, love Dwayne Carter. I don't think we're talking enough about. Um, him. Um, uh, uh, let's let Malik go here. I, yeah, I, I'm interested. There's a couple of names right now. I got, I got, I got a sticky one too. I'm interested. There are there are about four guys that I'm looking at right now. Kate mm. Stover is one of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tight end, Ohio State. It fills yes. the tight end need, right? Yes. Keep him, keep him home, if you will. Uh, Audrick Estime, running yes. back, Notre Dame. Big fan. Big My fan. guy. Big that fan. You guys all know I'm a huge fan of Will Shipley. Yes. He's still sitting on the board. Um, Cam Hart, even a fun one too. Corner. Braylon Allen is still sitting here too. Braylon Allen, 
But also a fun I, one. But Christian, I feel like you have to address the tackle position, like sort of like we talked about. Yeah. But uh, it, to me, it comes down to tackle or, or Cage Stover right now. I don't yeah. know if you guys. Do I mean, the same if, or where if you guys are at, it's a good day. I go there. I haven't talked to in a while. Two two things, and this may just be I'm looking at the sexy picks, but I'm looking wow. wide receiver, running back. I'm in on those. I like, mm-hmm. first off, let me just say, it depends on what type of wide receiver you want. Number one, I will say Malik Washington is one of my favorite Lighting wide receivers bottle, in the baby. draft. I don't necessarily know about the Bengals. He is, think of like a smaller Debo Samuel. Breaks yep. a ton of tackles. He's only five foot eight. But if you want a guy that can break tackles, if you want a guy who can extend for catches, he is a yak guy. So Malik Washington, I don't necessarily know for the Bengals, but he's a guy I like. And I'll be honest, I think if, if you have Will Shipley, or Audrey Esme, I think both of those two can be mm-hmm. number one running yeah, backs at the is. NFL level. Yeah. Um, the only other name I will throw out here, not a receiver. It's, it's a position we, you know, we can't, I don't want to say we can't draft at this point. Like alluded to it a little bit earlier, but it's an edge player here. I think, uh, better pull up the edge here. There's a guy that I really like, but I, I'm, I like him later. I really like Javon Solomon here mm-hmm. from, from Troy as well. Um, again, the reason why I think he, he can work here is because he's a little bit smaller. Think of a guy like Bryce Huff. He's kind of that player where he's, a, he's truly going to be a pass rush specialist. I mean, this guy last year had 17 sacks in 2023 in his three years of starting. He has 32 sacks in three years coming off a 90 overall PFF grade in this past year. The dude just gets to the quarterback. You know, for looking at dudes at this point in draft, you can truly end up becoming a, a really, really good football player. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, so, that's that's something to consider at least a little bit here. So, as well, in my too. opinion, the best edge rusher left on the board that I would spend a premium mm. pick on is Nelson Caesar. Mm. Let me hear Nelson it. Caesar. Let me hear it. Beast? He's, he's an absolute beast. High motor guy. He's a guy that I think has double digit sack upside. He's a disruptor. Um, and I feel like I'm not a lot. I think because he, the school he went to is not getting enough love mm-hmm. and uh, not being talked about enough. But here's the thing. I'm yeah. not confident in this, but I think there's a chance he might be around at yep. pick one. There's, a, there's, there's definitely a chance. There's, there's a chance, definitely a chance. But that's that's also tough because he he again is is, is a game changer, man. Mm-hmm. And um, he's a guy that I feel very very careful. I mean, I feel, I feel really really uh, good about. So him. we're thinking tackles a little bit. I, I think honestly, I, I'm I mean I I know I'm the GM. I'm, I'm willing to do whatever you guys think, but I, I think we got to draft Christian Jones here. In my I think that's a pick that you can feel good about that yeah. gives you a swing tackle option right now. With, yeah. You've got two kind of larger tackles that yeah. can lead to injuries carrying that much weight. Yeah. And that's definitely something good to have. Yeah. I feel like he's the last, last of yeah. the, uh, I, I could, you know, worst case scenario, maybe if, a, if, you know, Javon Foster, I kind of like as well, but again, he's, he's obviously a little more riskier. There's, there's a reason. I just think so much lower. Those situations where we just, you know, we're reaching for guys or we're unhappy with yeah. Them. Yeah. One I, one last thing. Oh, we will and pass up on the running backs, Shipley and I, I, Osmail. Are we okay I, I with that? We're we're okay with that? There. I think we're fine there. All right. I think, you got Zach Moss. Wait, got hold, on, hold on. Let's make sure we're all we're all set. We're so all, what else would we consider? I would outside just of Christian Jones. I would just consider the running backs. That's it. But I I like the Christian Jones pick. I, 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 I need you to oh, stand on the name. Esme, it's either okay. Esme or Will Shipley, just because I don't either. If who is it? Oh, who would we pick? Okay, uh give me Esme. Okay. The only reason is because I don't know if you can find a number one running back in rounds five. And if we're okay with that, I'm okay with that for this year. I'm okay it, with that. It, I it think it feels a little bit negligent if we don't address tackle. I think. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I mean, if you guys just like, I'm willing. No, to do no, 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 no. This is, this I, is your I, I would go Christian tackle, Jones potential here. starter, yeah. which. If we're looking at Trent Brown's history, like you've got a thirty percent chance he finishes the yeah. season. Yeah, right? and I, I will do, we, say, do we all believe that Christian Jones can develop into yes, yes, a starting, a starting yes. cover player? Yeah. I think yes. I think he's a very high floor high floor player. The it. ceiling might not be I, anything crazy. Another thing about this Christian Jones pick and the offensive lines in general. Real quick, clap it up. Woo! Clap it up. Christian Jones, love it. Uh, but if you look at what about the Steelers draft, Michael Pratt, that's a good pick by them. It is. That is as well. But you know, we know the Bengals kind of like to draft a little bit of a year ahead, and you're mm-hmm. looking at the free agents. On the roster next year, that are our offensive linemen: Trey Hill, Jackson Carmen, mm-hmm. Dante Smith, Ted Karras. That's four rostered linemen. I know, not, you know, those three of those might not have been very good or might not receive many playing right. time, but that's still four rostered offensive linemen that you now have to spend money to bring back if you don't replace them in the draft. So, absolute worst case, you're replacing, you're upgrading your swing tackle, which is Eric extremely Hall, valuable. Like Davis goes to the Falcons. And, I, and honestly, just switching up to the tight ends. I was okay with passing up on the tight ends. I didn't love the Eric All. I didn't love Cade Stover. I think you're – Stover's heading- solid. But, like, yes. that's the thing is, like, the athleticism is always going to cap him. Yes. Like, yes. he's going to be good at finding the soft spot in the zone, making contested catches. But, like, 
Michael Hall to the there's, Niners. There's, oh, that's such a good thing. Solomon. Solomon goes I like to the Jaguars. I like that fit, too. I like that fit, too. Mike Hall's only 20 with the 49ers. This, this would be our pick here. Or, what it, no, wait, wait. Yeah, we're we, 115. We're 115. Was that uh, Hall? That was, that was, that was Hall. Hall. That was Hall. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was Hall. That was Hall. That was Hall. The thing about Hall, he's hey, 20 years Bronco. old. Yes. Get their so this is kind of a talk of what we were having, right, where you end up in the third round with Michael Hall, with Dwayne Carter, yes. with some other options on the board. You feel good about where you are at defensive, interior defensive, where you Estimated have prospects, bucks. right? Yes. How did you That's feel about the offensive white. tackles at that point? Not very. Right. Yes. So you're seeing the D-line going, we still have really good players out here at yeah. edge interior, but you're looking at the tackles and going, man, we really got to get a guy now. And he has limited Wait, upside. Like so it. that's kind of the argument mm. for looking tackle yes. early because yeah. Tyler Guyton to me is, I'm not a huge fan. I think he's a big project and I don't think the Bengals have that track record yeah. of being able to develop those guys. Which is so why I'm we like the high floor of Jones. Right. So then the next guy after him, I'm not comfortable taking him in but the second round. That's, that's, that's a good that's fit. A good fit. I like that. But you know what's crazy, guys? Honestly, when we look at it, I like what we've done so far. People have to well, you address big the fan. trenches. You 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 get yours on. You get Tavondre, even though we had to trade up to get. You get uh, Christian. You get Frazier. You get guys that are gonna uh, gonna add to the uh, you mm -hmm. know the, the trenches. And I know trenches are never a sexy pick. We want the wide receivers. We want those picks. But, but these are the guys that are going. To, you still have Jamar Chase. You still have to. You add a Mike Gesicki. This, this is the time. Well, Shipley, Shipley, Shipley just wins. Nelson Caesar, man. Oh, oh, the Titans. Vincent, it goes to the dang. Team. That's a that, the two tight that, That's a rough. That's a yeah. rough stretch for us there. Yeah, I mean, I would have loved right off the board, okay, first Theo. guy looking at I me, mean, Theo, Theo Johnson, Johnson man. Look at Theo. Johnson, yeah. Theo Johnson's yeah. almost the. So don't yeah. even look at the rest. I know Daniel's boy Xavier Thomas is in there though too. I, like <laughs> I actually like both. I like Tyler Davis. If you guys yeah. want a nose yes. tackle, but we're good. We're for good. Now. So yeah, I mean now, Max like we talk about, we've we've Ooh, hit Dallin Holker. We've hit the trenches. Dallin we've, Holker. We've hit the trenches right now. So now we can have fun. We can take some some flyers on running backs, receivers, high upside athletes. Right. That's what we can do now because we. Paid up and drafted the trenches, which White is something we've never done. The White McGlover. Oh, that's a good one. I thing. like the heat mm -hmm. too. The White McGlover. You He's know what, long. guys? He's I'm going to stand long. on the table. Hey, I don't, I'm going to stand I don't on care. the table. I, I'm in. I'm, I'm like, going to stand on the table for a cornerback. The White McGlover. <laughs> shout out to Marissa. She yep. put me on him. You know, I, I think that I think tight end is a good spot as well to go He's, to, but. Well, I'm a good pick. Cameron. He's a good pick. He's the first one right there. I mean, I'm I'm with it. He's he's one of those longer kind of guys too. Uh, let's go to running back. Let's see what's available. Yeah. Can, can, I, can I, while we, while we're maneuvering this, can I wax poetic about Theo sure. Johnson real quick? Hear it. Okay. So Theo Johnson, oh, crazy six foot six, 260 pounds, 90th percentile athlete and 40 yard dash, 20 yard split, 10 yard split, shuttle, vertical, broad God. jump. You're talking like he moves you, unbelievably. You guys well. remember Zach Koontz last year was the money. best, most athletic tight end of the last 25 years. He is the number two. Like, and but the difference is instead of Koontz being a complete project, Theo Johnson can already play in line. Koontz Theo Johnson, transferred because of Theo Johnson. Right. So <laughs> Theo Johnson can already play in line. Theo Johnson is a quality blocker, has good length, can even take on edge players in some instances yes, because he, of that size, because of that length, because he's six foot six, two fifty. But he's also the Mike Gasecki level receiver athlete in a straight line. Now his change of direction, the guy turns on the boat. But, literally. But that's Okay, if all you need him to do is, hey, run hey, up the seam. We're going to have you run up the seam. We're going to have you run some hitches and curls. We're going to have you run some crossers, stuff that doesn't require you to be a high level change of direction Sam yeah. Laporta tight end, where I feel like that's really valuable to get at this stage where this guy could legit be like a, a middle tier potential high end tight end one starter. And I feel like that's something that you're getting from him that you're not getting from these other guys right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think when you look at tight end, I'll be honest, I think at this point, I like it. Mm -hmm. My only concern with Theo Johnson, this may be, I should probably watch a little more, but I, I just didn't see, like, compare him with Mike Gesicki's film. I want a tight end who is constantly going up and winning 50-50 balls, and I just didn't see a lot of that. I, I, I think, I think that's, uh, this is, that's been an issue with all the Penn State tight ends in the recent years. They have about eight tight ends always on that roster. And then they, they just the ball That they just either. move in and out. And well, if then you're they on run the field, play defense, right? But here's the other thing is that he had 34 catches and seven of them were touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. So you got a guy who's a threat to come off the seam and get your touchdown that way. Who's a threat in the red zone to use that giant body? Tell me how a slot yes. corner is going to cover this six foot yeah. five, two hundred and sixty pound guy. You're not. It's not. Yeah. You're not. And how is a linebacker? But you know who can? Him? Unless you're corner, you're not. I, I was going to say. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, this is, and I feel like a lot of Bengals fans and people don't know about this guy yet. Dwight McLeod. Yeah. McLeod. McLeod. 
The glove glove. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. <laughs> I understand the Theo Johnson, but I think the fact that you sign Mike Gesicki and you bring him back Tanner Hudson. Andrew you Sample, three-year Andrew deal, Sample, man. You feel better about your tight end spot. I like Theo Johnson, but I the question for me is, is Dwight going to make it to pick 194? And I don't know if he does. However, for the, sake, for the sake of for the sake of me being a team player, let's draft uh, Theo Johnson here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, mean, I, I, I appreciate it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I made the coin there. Yeah. No. I, 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 th- I mean, there's there's clap it up, snap it up. Snap. But, but like, here's the thing: if Dwight is there at 194, I'm racing to the podium. L- l- yeah. Let me just say this: I think there's two guys. It's either Dwight. I also like kind of funny story. We were having uh, lunch at the combine. I'm gonna guy, be watching. Yeah, yeah, okay, you got that. The guy sat next go. to us, uh, Ryan Watts, Texas cornerback. He yes. transferred yep. from Ohio State. He tested off the charts in uh, at the NFL Combine. I watched his tape against Alabama. It was some of the best tape Zach I've seen. To the Vikings. So yeah, Hulker, Hulker gone. But That's a good move there. But yeah, I mean, I, the cornerbacks a weird position, you know, because I think there's some higher upside guys. That could be available, but nobody's going to be super rock solid. Yeah, he got picked. Yeah, that's, that, that's a that's a good that's a good fit there. But I mean, we're looking at the thing now. Like we have, you know, we there's still some solid cornerback free agents out there that we can go target. But you know, we're looking at these corners now. Like the odds of them, the odds of a corner really being good in this range are going to be slimmer. Yep. You know what I mean? And yep. we need production. So it's like at this point, cornerbacks becoming one of those positions where you might almost just punt unless there's. Is Some this, other guys is, that we tell really me, like. Tell me right. right now, Malik. I want you to declare right now: Is Dwight McLovin going to be your Carrington Valentine of this mm-hmm. year? Where? Yep, he will be. We constantly try and get him be. just around later, and he, he just be. can't. And then he goes he to like be. the Ravens. He will be. Yeah. He, will, he will be. Trust me. <laughs> that guy. When you watch his tape, think of the good. Mm-hmm. Uh, that he reminds me very much of uh, William Jackson before he went off. I can the, see that. Went, went I can see that. I can like, see that. He 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 is really good, man. I, I'm, I'm, I, th- and I think a lot of things like we watched him at the combine, like he, in the drills, he didn't look good to be honest. And that's what some people are saying. He looked bad, Yeah. but turn on the tape. The dude is a ball hawk. We watch his film. The dude just makes plays. I want a guy who is, looks like a wide receiver and that's what he does. High points the ball. Um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Dwight McLeathern. Yeah. Uh, Coming up something there. we haven't talked about or we haven't picked is a wide receiver. No, we no. have, we haven't gotten a wide receiver yet. So I like Vittle there too from Troy. I'm watching a lot of Troy film for some reason lately. <laughs> Man, that, that hurt. Not yeah, I, that one hurt. All right, well we got we got four picks. Though. Let's rally. Let's rally. Let's rally. No, no. Okay, we're done. Uh, Trade them. Trade Ryan the picks. Ryan Watts, Daniel, still here. I like uh, Ryan. Yeah. I mean, if I mean, uh, Anthony Gold from Morgan State's a receiver. Your Daniel just talked about. He's probably. I mean, I don't know about. Check out the wide receiver position real quick. Yeah. Um, he might be the fastest one available. We know that's what we need at this point. I like Joshua Cephas as well, but again, these are these are depth, depth, depth receiver yeah. options at this point. Well, you know, also I don't talking, like, especially with the new kickoff rule, yeah, that exactly. having an explosive playmaker back there. Who's gonna turn we can also check running back well. here as well. You know, it's probably not much, but like and see, it sucks because on here our guy uh, George Holani absolutely love George Holani yeah, out of Boise State. He's not on uh, PFF's thing, but let me just tell you guys, he is going to be a very productive uh, NFL running back. He. Uh, Coming out of high school was a huge five-star recruit. Went to Boise State, had offers from Utah, UCLA, and was extremely productive. Look at his final game against UCLA. The biggest moment, had a huge game against UCLA in a bowl game. Um, Frank Gore Jr., man, that's a name. I I, I like Frank Gore Jr. Um, Taking a swing on some athleticism and obviously clearly the bloodline. I do love Cody Schrader, not necessarily for the Bengals, but – he is – I think he can be a, a starting uh, – or he can be a third a down hard, running yeah, back. He's a hard nose. Yes. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, but, I mean, just go back, pull up the whole board right now. I mean, the receivers were whatever. Ryan Watts there, like you said, is whatever. I mean, truthfully, I still like the, that Penn State center up there. I have no clue how to pronounce his name. That's, Tanner. That's just Tanner is well, so we, we, we already picked, we picked Zach yeah, Frazier, but, but – Like I said, Carmen, yes. Hill, Smith, Ted are all going to be free agents yes. next year, yeah. and you still need – you know, there's there's a world where Frazier's your starting center, center and um Morlini's your starting guard. Yeah, right. You know, like I think that's a real possibility in two or three years as well. Like I'm all on board for that. Obviously, yep. I, I, I don't I don't think 
it'd be a bad idea to consider even a, another tackle here, you know, I, I more of a developmental guy. To that point, I think it's fair to ask yourself, where have the Bengals tried to focus a lot of their draft capital the last couple of years? And it's been wide receiver. It's been yeah. corner. It's been safety. It's been linebackers. It's been trying to fill out the trench depth a little bit, but just missing on that. And I think this is a very good opportunity in this draft. Like Logan said, to replenish the trenches, get better mm -hmm. depth in there because how stale did the back end of the rotation for the yeah, offensive yeah. line get for years yeah. where they just kept yeah. saying, hey, this is Hakeem, Hakeem Dedeji's year. Hey, this yeah. is De Deontay Smith. This is the year. This is Christian Westerman's year. This yeah. is it. This is it. Like, this is an opportunity to get yeah. new bodies in there, new developmental projects, and take another swing I, at that. I, and then you don't have to worry about it for the next two yeah. to three years. There's there's two more positions I'd like yep. to pull up. Can we look at a uh, tight end for a second, too? Mm. You know, we already took one, but still. Okay. I mean, no, no. <laughs> um, and then linebacker. Yeah. No, we kind of considered one early, and we talked. You know, we still need some depth at the position. Um, I'm a big Dallas Grant guy here. I've been watching a ton of linebackers. Lately. He's had 170 tackles in the last two years. 170 tackles in the last two years from Toledo is just – he's just an athlete that plays linebacker. He's all around the ball. He shifts through all the nonsense pretty well. And just – again, it's just kind of one of those positions where we kind of at this point kind of just need some depth. You know what I mean? Like we need – we have Lug Wilson. We have Pratt, but then – we have ADG one year deal. You know, right. you'd assume he's probably not going to be back again. I'm yeah. surprised he returned anyway. And then after that, you currently have we currently have nothing. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't think it's a bad. You maybe it's not necessarily him, well, but just out. some linebackers do you have in general. Or do you have a lot of safeties that could probably play? That's in a that's bit true too. That's true too. But so at most, you then yeah, you'd have right. three. You'd have yeah. three. Go, go back right. to uh, Tanner Williams. Yes. yes, I'm all in on that. By the way, yes. I just think that we. I just Cohen think that I, I think too, that though. we've been. I think we've gotten. Uh, hurt a couple of times the last couple of seasons by not having enough depth or quality depth mm -hmm. at the offensive line into where I am going in and I'm saying, Hey, you know what? I'm not letting that mess me up again. I love this it. is a guy that could play probably three, all, all three spots yes. inside of the interior of the offensive line. You feel good about him, right? He, he could, could he be your, um, you know, your, can he, can he challenge for a guard spot? Yes. Right. Could he, could he challenge, uh, you know, uh, yes. Cordell Volson? Yeah. Yes. That's it, the thing is now you're bringing in two guys mm -hmm. that could possibly either elevate, Cordo Wilson by creating competition or mm -hmm. succeed him in that yeah. spot. The offensive line's better, period. With, right. with them on the team. And, right. you know, it's a six round. I got a four, I got a low fourth on yep. Bordellini. I'm all in. Um uh yeah, I, I like Bordellini. Yeah. I like him. I like him. L let me just say this. We talked to him at the combine too. If you guys want a veteran, if you guys want a great locker room presence, Tanner is one thousand percent the guy. Mm -hmm. He comes from a small town. His town has a hundred people. That, that's the population. Or his high school class had 100, you know, people. Very small town. He only had, you know, one other guy in their town that's ever gone to the NFL. And he is just a team's player, 1,000% through and through. Tanner Bordellini, I think at this stage, this is what, round five, round six? I think I'm with you. I think he's a round four. Yeah. I think at Even higher, when his career is all said and done, people will be looking at him as one of the best offensive linemen from this class. I think he'll have a long yeah. career at the NFL level. He's good. I agree for sure. I like it. Uh, I like it. I like it. Cody yeah, Schrader goes to the Lions. I saw. I saw like that, that uh, the Bills took Steel Chambers. Yeah. What a name! A what a Steel name! Chambers. That's a Bills name too. Oh, like oh, no, guys, Frank you, Gore to the guys, Eagles. Oh, oh no! How, how are we feeling about um, about our draft so far? I, mean, I love it's it. It's not. It's not the most sexiest personally. Uh, I, I don't think. I it's really the, like it. Uh, all right. I, I think this is a spot here where we need to talk about getting our running back, maybe. At this, at this yeah. point, is it is it worth even drafting? That's where I'm at. I would go. I mean, if George Helani was here, can, I'd be I would go George Helani if he was here. Can, Are can, we even? You pull up. I, I don't know. I don't love Jason. I me don't either. either. I, I never. When you're done, after when watching, you're done now maybe we were just spoiled, but from T. Rich to like everybody bad. now, Carson like good pick. there, there's not, not a single running back from Alabama that I felt less inspired by than Jason mm -hmm. Crowley. Yep. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's. You know, we if, if, yeah, if we're looking at running backs real quick, I think Carson Steele's another guy, six foot one, two hundred something pounds, uh, transferred out of uh, somewhere to go to Ball UCLA. Thing. I love Carson Steele. Um, on the table for him. Let's hear it. Uh, no, I think it, it's honestly simple. I think when I'm looking at a running back for the Bengals, I want somebody who can complement Chase Brown's explosiveness. Mm -hmm. I want somebody who can complement uh, Zach Moss's power. And in my opinion, I'm drafting somebody to be my future uh, workhorse early down running back. And sure when I'm looking at this guy. board. Six foot one, that's who I want. Carson Steele, his biggest attribute, hands down, is his ability to just run through guys. He is great between the tackles. He's also got juice outside. I think he ran a good 40. Solid, yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly. But, but the dude is just an extremely physical runner. 
And I know some people don't like running backs out of UCLA. You know, they haven't done well That's in the past. But listen, say. Carson Steele, looking at this round six, um, I like Isaiah Davis as well, but I'm looking at Carson Steele. I'm trying to project a future yeah. starting running I don't, back. I don't, I don't hate He's that got the potential. As well. uh, I want you to check out the edge just because, you know, there's a couple smaller school guys. I want to see if they're still here. We scroll a little bit. I don't know. No, there's not. The guy I was looking at his gone. I, I mean, I like uh, Carson Steele a lot too. Like I said, ball state transfer kind of fits. Um, but what other positions are we kind of looking at? Whittington's on a bad receiver option. They're kind of your your bigger at blocking. At this point, if I can get either like, an ace on special teams or if I can get someone who can just contribute that I feel is going to make the roster because the last thing you want to do is pick three guys that aren't even going to make the roster oh, right now. Do you check my uh, linebacker too again? Dallas Grant, see if he's still there. Obviously, I know I kind of bargained for him a little Dallas, bit last yeah. round as the, I still think linebacker. I mean, that, could, that could still be a guy that's there with our next pick. Obviously, we're at 252 here. Right. For, that's what his that's what his rank is. We're at 214. We have 224. We could go. I mean, Steele is another guy that's obviously projected later, but we don't care about that. If we believe in them, we believe in them. Um, but what else, what else are we really looking at? Is there any like I, I mean, feel like I feel like it's you're just kind of filling out the roster. Yeah, that's that's, that's what I'm looking at. So running I, backs, linebackers. I, I, I think that the uh I think uh Carson Steele makes a lot of sense here, but I mean we, we definitely haven't drafted a wide receiver. As yeah, well. but see, the, this is the hard thing. There, yeah. there's not like there's some more wide receivers that aren't on here. One guy that I absolutely love. Um, his name's Ryan Flournoy. He had a huge senior bowl, six foot. I'm looking at a wide receiver who can play the X position, and Ryan is a guy who absolutely stood out. He can high point the ball. Absolutely, he plucks the ball out of midair. Ryan Flournoy is a guy. He is out of um, Southeast Missouri State. I want you guys to remember that name, Ryan Flournoy, yeah. but he's not on here. I, another but. guy that I don't believe is on here either for the receiver position is uh, Jalen Coker from Holy Cross as well. Yes. Kind of another similar vibe. Just explosive athlete, you know, just does some fun things. So I, I got to I gotta talk to our, 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 our shout our scouts out here in the chat who are pointing mm -hmm. out that Isaiah Isaiah Davis is here. And you're talking about a guy who came from South Dakota State, smaller school. Jack Rabbits. You, yep. You've got to dominate the competition, right, and if you want to be in did. that conversation. Yeah. And holy shit, did he, right? Yeah. So, like, what do we talk about all the time? I Or what do I talk about all the time? With a running back, what do you want, right? You want a guy who breaks tackles or forces missed tackles mm -hmm. and gets yards after contact. That's how running backs add to their rate, add to what is there besides what's blocked. Right. His elusive rating last year was 139.3. Hmm. To put that in perspective, Mixon's for the last couple of years has wavered between like 35 and 50. Hmm. Like a significantly more elusive, and you're not sacrificing size for it. He's 6'1, yep. 220. He's still big. He's quick. He's hard to bring down. He's got a 94.5 grade when running in gap schemes. He's got a 91.1 grade when running in zone schemes. So whatever you want to run with him, you can do it. I, I feel like that's a guy who really can give you a lot of versatility and give you yeah. some juice I'm in on outside that. of breaking yeah. those times. And I also think that like drafting an Isaiah Davis doesn't stop us from drafting a Carson Steele next yeah. round really either if you really wanted to double dip, dip, double dip at the running back position there. <laughs> so I mean. Yeah, not even just breaking tackles. Yards after contact per attempt, 3.97 yards after contact per attempt, yeah. almost four yards after contact. Double -double. So between all that, I, I definitely, you know, shouts to the scouts in the chat pointing that out. Like Isaiah Davis is definitely a, a very intriguing. He feels like a scouts option. pick, huh? Mm. You know, hey, our guys are out there staying the in the shitty Marriott yeah. hotels out on the – East Coast watching Liberty Cross University's state. third practice of the week. So yeah, State Tech <laughs> yeah. College. Yeah. So no, shout out this to the show, Scouts, man, out there. This on. show is unhinged. <laughs> so what, what are we thinking yeah. here? What are we thinking? Man? No, I, I like Isaiah Davis. I think my the only difference between like a hit guy a with him and Steel uh, would definitely be like I don't like Isaiah Davis in pass protection. I think that was one of the things, but that can be worked on. It's a freaking what six round. Right. So honestly, Isaiah Davis and Carson Steele, I got both of them. Give me, a, give me a second. Scroll yeah. down for a second. So, Scroll down because we still have we have Brandon picks. Coleman. I will say here is another one that's not bad well, either. We have another pick in a couple of picks, right? We have so, two more, three, three more, three more total. This hear, one and two hear, more. Hear me out. Let's go to yes. linebacker for a second. We'll Let's talk go to about linebacker it. for a second. Yep. Why not take Logan's guy Dallas Gant yep. right here, man? To uh, Round out the linebackers yeah. position, right? I mean, why why not take him here? Is my thought process. Did you watch any think, Darius or no? Do we do we? Do yeah, we, I did. He he's solid, he's but like fine. he just he's not as good as an athlete as yep. Grant. And I think like do Evan we, talked about with Isaiah Davis, you want a guy from the smaller schools, you want him to dominate. 170 tackles in yep. two years is absurd. That's what you want. Yep. You know, I used like to make him plays, but again, these are you know, 
you don't want to get cocky. You don't want to get too confident, but like, these are all three people that, you know, are almost projected UDFAs, you know, not that, that right. they're not that on our so, board, so but what still. We'll, what we'll do is we'll take a running back. We'll take, we'll take Davis here right now. Yep. Um, Davis. Yep. Woo! Snap. I don't know if I'm for that one, but uh, <laughs> Cullen's a good pick. You got some feelings about the pick? No, I, I'm I'm still salty about Glover. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, remember, he said there, screw these last three over there. I, I think I think that uh, I think he's going to be really really good. Jason one of these uh, one of these that's a third episodes, running back. I'll bring some whiskey with me and I'll pour oh, yeah. one out yeah, for you. Yeah, I think I'll be one of those ones over there again. Uh, we're about to come up again. I yeah. forgot that these picks. We know, we know, we know. I think we know what we're taking. Very close. Let's take Gant here. I like it. I took my chance and I said, "Hey, let's linebacker." Right. Probably right, right there. Right there. Two fifty-two. Thank nice. you. Nice. Filling so, out. You got to fill out a position group. Right. You know, you got you got to roster when, uh, more. I think that's when the picks start to start to fly off the board a little bit. Yeah, know? I agree. I agree. Uh, I agree. Oh, my boy. Last pick here I for us. I I'll be honest with you, and you tell me who you want. Yeah. Tell me. Oh, um, well, I mean, depends on, I guess it's the freaking seventh round. A Evan Anderson, uh, FAU, same school that Trey Henderson went to. Uh, dude is big. If yeah. you're talking about nose tackle, dude is big. Uh, I think 330. Um, he was very productive. And that's something where, I mean, if you're looking for somebody to build, I know Uncle the defense on the tackle room isn't, you Very know, sick. isn't necessarily a need now because you got Montez Sweat. Mm -hmm. Or uh, Tavon, you're ready sweat. to learn Chinese, Zach Carter. But I, I love, yeah, honestly, I think if you want to get Florida size, boys, Evan baby, Anderson you're ready to learn Florida, man. <laughs> I do like Zach as a running back. Too. Who else? Do I need? But um, just keep scrolling down. Uh, I mean, there's, there, I mean, like I said, there's some more Josh linebackers. Proctor, you see, there's yeah, some more yeah, linebackers yeah. that you can take shots at. I mean, Jared Wiley from TCU is honestly a pretty good tight end option here as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, Sam, Sam Hartman, Hartman yeah, isn't, isn't terrible. We pulled tight ends actually real quick. If we can't, I just, oh. I mean, <laughs> I'm just curious who is there. Oh, no, we looked at that. We, we looked, we checked that already. We checked that already. You're good. I do like grabbing span four a little bit. Your typical bigger blocking Any tight end. But, I, mean, um, I mean, I, I don't necessarily think Carter? I would go. That's what I was just going to say. That's because what I was going to say. I don't, I don't know if I would really like give up on him yet, Matt though. Romero. Was it Ryan? No, it was Ryan. 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 We, we talked with Ryan at the NFL Combine. Dude is hilarious. He's a great dude. Um, I think he, he was fine. Um, I mean, he's ranked 317, but um, <laughs> a Will Riker. Still, he obviously don't need a kicker, but I mean, we, we might. <laughs> free agent Evan McPherson Roll demanding touch. millions and millions and millions and millions. All right. Again, this is our last pick. Mm -hmm. Are we going to are we gonna try to shoot for a absolutely stud shot in the dark? Are we filling out a roster space? What are we trying to I do? Mean, here? I mean, I kind of like the Austin McNamara pick. I, I like. I mean, I like Austin McNamara. Yeah, I just bring I in some competition. I don't, but like, then you're where just else are you going to get a starter right now? What, what, what's the what's the wasted pick right now? Because if you bring this in, one, if he doesn't beat out whoever, so what are we going to pick? Like a corner, maybe, or you could pick. You know, not that you could pick another linebacker. We still only have four now. You know, I guess I, I guess I'd that might be a corner. I, you could pick a corner still. still. Yeah, you know, I, I think we totally could. We totally could. You know, but maybe they're waiting to see how the line. You know what I, I mean? Just, like, I, I, think, I think punter is a position that has that has hurt us. You know, it has. I'm just worried less maybe. about the Jordan I mean, Evans role in this defense. You know, like that's yeah. that's not quite at the forefront of my mind. At the I mean, I believe forever. Isn't, um, <laughs> where's your guy, Daniel? Carson Steele is still here too. You know, we considered him yeah. two picks ago. I know we drafted Isaiah Davis, but that's still something to. But I mean, who's making the, the Cur running back? Curtis, at that right. point, I mean, right? we've kept four running backs for yeah, but you bring back years. Travion. You bring back uh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot about we right. signed him. Right. Not that that would stop you, no, but, but you <laughs> give an extension, yeah. I don't know. Um, this is basically a priority free agent pick. You want to know what I, what I think, guys? Yeah, I also like Those Keith Randolph. I also quarterback for a second. Quarterback? quarterback? Keith Randolph, teammate of Jerzon Newton. This is just some, saying. The Jake Browning erasure. Oh, my goodness. He didn't slow this. I Tackle like by Loa. Tank for this. Tua? Like tank for Tua? This. For me, I just think that, like, I love, you love what Jake, what Jake Browning showed you. Yep. But can yeah. Sam Hartman, can Kenan Slovis, can any of those guys replicate that? Oh, even, I mean, even better. All of those. I mean, even a guy like John Rice Pumley, who's just an athlete. Because he's probably going to want to look to test for agency after when this year. When he can, yeah. You know what I mean? So like I don't know. Take I mean, the Gardner Carter Bradley for some team. Yeah. Just, yeah. I like Sam Hartman, and the reason why I like Sam Hartman is because he's a guy that's been around, right? Yes. I mean, he, even though he's not been around the league, mm. he he's, he's proven. Right? We would he's have one good looking right. quarterback room. Yeah. Man. Yes. Yeah. Man. <laughs> what's, that, what's that mean? The hoes gonna love this. Jersey sales, baby. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. 
really are considering a quarterback. Carter Bradley, son of Gus Bradley, you know, defense coordinator. You got some betting on some bloodline there, too. I don't know if we You're want Gus Bradley shots. anywhere near the coaching just, staff. You don't, the you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, but maybe oh, he I'll learned, he right learned a few I want things. Gus Bradley. What do you guys think? What, what, what do you guys think? Yeah. What, are we, what are we looking at here? Uh, I'm saying punter. I'm, I'm going to say punter. Punter or corner. Like, you need depth to corner. Two things you never thought to hear. Punter or corner. None of those. The two most valuable positions. There's three corners left in the PFS. Much off simulator. Oh, wait, go what back corner, please. Hey, corner's valuable position. That it is. I keep seeing uh, we have uh, what's we have the disc golf dad, one of our scouts, because he's, he's going hard for Jerry. He's going Monroe hard right for Jerry. I respect Monroe. for who for Jarius Monroe, cornerback. Out of really, he is going hard. Might have to turn on some of his tape. Um, I, I mean, I'm all I'm all for corner depth at all moments in time in life. Hey, you always need more corners. We just watched the Steelers draft about four receivers, so we need about eight corners to right. cover them. Just in case. Yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, I, I don't hate it. Like, I can't say I can't Just watch go ahead and add depth to the room just in case DJ Ivy isn't completely healthy. You've got a little bit more. I like. I would also – I wouldn't hate going punter, to be honest. But I, wouldn't I also like – I mean, if one of why, our scouts why, why is saying – Why are we not talking more about the quarterback spot? I, mean, just let's, let's talk I don't hate it either. You it's just such a weird Jake thing. Browning already has you there. But then, like he said, what if – He's gonna leave after this year, more than likely. You'd assume. I really, I like this. I don't. I like Sam Hartman or yep. Kenneth I do. Yeah. I think I think they're they're they would be solid backup quarterback options in the NFL, which is what you would be drafting them to do in the seventh round. So, like for me, I guess it's different. My my uh, where I see it is a little bit different. I don't know why we're taking so much on the last pick, right? Because <laughs> this is the one that's gonna win us the Super Bowl. We always do this. The Super Bowl is where. Yeah, this points. is where it's made. Brock Purdy. Hey, Brock Mystery Purdy. Yeah, yeah, we can't possibly yeah. forget about Chad Kelly. We're not um, worried about that. Right, one. Chad <laughs> Kelly for years. Ago, I thought he would be. Um, Ooh, not me. But but McNamara to me is a is a guy that I think can definitely challenge for the punting spot. But then it's either it's either McNamara or quarterback for me. That's just where I'm at. I, but that doesn't mean my pick doesn't mean jack shit necessarily. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can we can agree yeah. or disagree on it. But I, just, I like Austin Daniel. Here. Uh, Final I, thoughts. I, th- I think I lean quarterback over punter. Okay, but just, just just because I feel like one of these punters will be a party free agent if you really want yeah. him. I, I but same thing for the quarterback. Like if you really like if, if the team's really going to go out of the way and draft Sam Hartman or Slovis, like are we going to be mad? McNamara is the best punter in the draft. Yeah, and if, if if you believe that, I mean, then yeah. I mean, I also like a boy Ryan. His only issue. Um, his only issue is he's um, too funny. We can't. No, we need all no. business in the like, locker room. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just his hang time isn't the best, which I, is the biggest yeah, issue. Which is kind have. of a thing yeah. when you punt the ball. You know, yeah. it's kind of where and how high. Those are he's kind a great of guy. Things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a great guy. We um, we did this with Andy Dalton. God bless Andy Dalton. But we did this with Andy Dalton. Like we're we're not going back to the he's a good guy. It's fine. I honestly, if if I were to pick, I'd probably go Hartman because you have like. 40 something picks, and I don't think the difference between McNamara and, and him is huge. So I would, you go where? Who? I would go uh, back to quarterback. Uh, Sam would go Hartman. So everybody in agreement, back up quarterback. Uh, I think so. I mean, he's, he's, Hart- he's he was he was a good starter for Notre Dame. He was no, he very was. good for them, and he's old, but back up quarterback, whatever. Seventh round pick. Whatever. Yeah. Send it in, coach. It's it's one, one it, you want. I will say it kind of goes with our theme of it does yeah. kind of go with our theme of just raising the floor of this team. Um, you know, I was gonna like, say we've talked this out to death, and it's the well, final yeah. pick of the draft. I like it. I think we can go. Who are we stealing the here? So, Evan Anderson is a beast. Him, Trevin but, Wallace is pretty solid too. I mean, again, are these guys making the roster? That's yeah. That's that's the well, we we. I mean, probably, probably. Well, you you keep three quarterbacks now on the roster. Yeah, you keep, you keep three. Yeah, the quarterbacks. I'm. We're looking at linebackers and running backs. Right if now, we're, I mean, I'm, honestly, the only lock to 100 percent make the team would probably be a quarterback. 100 uh, percent lock. Here, let's. Uh, I don't, I, don't, I don't think we need to make it this hard, guys. No, we, we don't. We, <laughs> we don't. do, though. Yeah, we, we don't. Every, Every pick matters. matters. Every pick here. matters. All here, picks matter. Every pick matters because. You I get think those, we've now you get those more about this last okay, seventh round well, pick than any other pick in the Because there's so many of them. All right. I'll just stop talking. No, don't. Um, I love it. This dude has we were, we were so close to a man. consensus, and now Malik's right, We got an Evan. Everything. We got a Logan. What else? We got a Daniel somewhere in here. Or Malik. Mm-hmm. Listen, no. I, I, believe in, I believe competition brings success. I agree Do with that. Favor. Let's go on over to punter for a second. Right. You're telling me Sam Harmon can't challenge <laughs> starting quarterback? I don't think, I don't think with this coaching staff he can. I don't. Um, give me Austin McNamara. All right, no complaint. Okay, snaps. 
So we'll call Sam Hartman and see if you want to stay in the area and be our. Uh, yeah. Why our, not? You're probably our guy. Evan Anderson, bro. Anderson, bro. But Keith Randolph, bro. Keith Randolph. You want to trade back up? And <laughs> get him. Go get him. <laughs> Let's Sam, trade back up again. Sam Hartman is still Let's here. Let's trade back up and get him. Oh, Guys, man. but we feel good about our drive, right? Yeah, really this do. was the first uh, War Room episode. First thing I need to say before this pops mm -hmm. up and everybody freaks out, because mm -hmm. I've seen plenty of people freaking out in the chat about this. Mm -hmm. I know it says center next to both of these guys. you got to remember a lot of these guys in the draft who are either listed as guard or listed as center have that guard yeah. center versus. There are probably zero centers on earth that can't play guard. Right. So, like, you're talking, like, you have two guys right now to help fill the gaps. One, behind Cordell Volson, Ted Karras, and Alex Kappa, which, by the way, none of the offensive linemen were hurt for a game last season. Yes. That is not happening yes. again. So, if the interior goes down, what are you doing? Putting Max Sharping in there right now? Yeah. Putting Cody Ford in there right now? Does anyone feel inspired by that going into the playoffs no. and dealing with any of this? So and, and, Yeah, I mean, like I said, too, as of, like, this time next year, we will have four offensive linemen that are free agents. Mm -hmm. You need right. to replace that depth one way or the other. Can't say that enough. You, right. you have four offensive linemen that you're going to have to replace. So, hmm. guys, the draft is in. Let's clap it up one last time. Very good. I'll be honest with you guys. You know, I'll, I, I – This is not I, what I was expecting today. No, this I, is a weird one. I love it. I don't love the Zach Frazier pick. Yeah. We can dissect them. We can dissect this now. We can talk about it. Yeah. I don't love the Zach Frazier pick because I think that there were other positions on the board a little bit. And um, I think we kind of hurt ourselves, especially when we look at who was available later. Um, but I understand the pick. Yeah. And you still – overall, you still – I'm not complaining. I'm not upset. I'm not upset. I don't – I just don't love the pick considering that – Yeah, taking a center early. Well, what's the always. upside of taking a guy like Fawaga in the first round, right? It's yeah. that he can compete immediately yeah. at left guard and give you an upgrade to yeah. the offensive line spot while also yeah. backing up other offensive yeah. line spots, right? Does. So what does Zach Frazier do for you? Yeah. He com immediately gives you competition at an upgrade at one spot 100%. and backs you up at three 100%. other offensive and line spots. I guess that's me wanting to be the sexy no, GM. 100%. Like, hey, give me one of my guys. Give yeah. me, you know, give me a different name there. I don't listen. I, it's one of those picks that is going to grow on me. Over that time. is a sexy. When, when I see him mauling, yes. when I see him mauling yes. BJ Hill yes. in preseason, yes. I'm like, oh, there's a guy. Yes. You know, right. then I'll be, that's, then I'll that's be exactly like, who would you say is your favorite pick? Yeah, let's go do that. Favorite pick, Malik. We'll go around the table. To be honest with you, my favorite pick is Jerzon Newton. Mm -hmm. Jerzon, yeah. I mean, that's, that's easy to say, right? Michael Jerzon points. Newton by far is my favorite pick. I think that um, you got to love about uh, you got to love about what that guy is going to bring to the table. Yeah. I think you finally get the pass rushing upside. Mm -hmm. You get the run stop. Bill. So much emphasis has been put on the nose tackle spot. But if you have a guy that can do both, like remember, there's not too many true nose tackles in the National Football League, and there that's aren't not. too many true nose tackles in the National Football League that – you know, are elite, like such as a DJ reader. And so like people, yeah. we got so hung up on, oh, we gotta, we gotta get a nose tackle when you can just get a really damn good defensive tackle who can stop the run, who can rush the passer, who has the three tech upside, who can have the, uh, the run stopping yeah. upside. And you feel good about, for me, this added to this team that we already have, Super Bowl roster. To add to that too, a uh, friend of the show who has been on before, John Sheeran had mm -hmm. a great article a couple weeks ago talking about if you go to Zon Newton, how do you figure out the nose tackle spot? And talking, too, about how, one, B.J. Hill has played that spot in college, has played that spot in the NFL, did when D.J. Reader went mm -hmm. down. And also that you're not asking this guy to be a head-on-the-center nose tackle, a zero or a one technique all the time. Mm -hmm. so a lot of times you end up lining up in an, at the two technique, right, or inside the shoulder of the guard. So you're not exactly – right on top of the center in a true traditional nose tackle way mm -hmm. that maybe some people would think so. So like, yeah, th that's an important part to consider, but all these guys, I mean, uh, Tavondre sweat had, da -da -da -da, let me pull up my notes here. Only 57 snaps in the a gap last season. And part of that was because you're playing next to a Byron mm -hmm. Murphy mm -hmm. who was playing in the a gap for 127 snaps and 294 in the B gap. These guys have that versatility yeah. to where you can put them in nose tackle. And if you want to put BJ Hill there instead and move those guys over or rotate the three tech, you can do that. So like your goal line packages, anytime you want to come out in a bear front or you want to put five down linemen, mm -hmm. you're going to have a nasty five. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And, and, and to, to your guys' point, um, I, I agree with you. I, you know, I think looking back, hindsight is always 20, 20 when you go back into the draft, yeah. you know, you probably would pull the trigger a little bit on uh Blake Fisher guy from the uh, right tackle yeah. from Notre Dame. You feel, I feel really, really good about him. If I could go back and do it maybe, but there's no, t I don't regret the Devontae sweat pick. I feel no. really good about the defensive line. Yes. The yeah. only question is going to be for Lou, 
How are you going to get all those guys on the floor, on, on the yeah. field? How are you going to get all those guys playing time, right? Mm-hmm. But you feel good. Talk about a team that wasn't able to stop the run. Mm-hmm. Talk about a team that really has struggled when it comes to the pass rush. They've drafted edge players. They have. And the whole thing is they believe that the interior of the defensive line, they get that figured out. They believe it's going to open up yeah. a world. It's going to make a world of difference for them yeah. uh, from the edge. I think they think that Joseph Asai is going to be in for a good year. Mm-hmm. Sam Hubbard, Tanner Hudson. I mean, not Tanner Hudson, uh, Trey Hendrickson. Those guys will break out if you have the interior of the defensive line figured out. And I kind of agree here. I, I really kind of agree there with this. I think that the really, really unique thing that you're going to be able to do, right, is you have Tavondre Sweat, right? Yeah. You have Tavondre Sweat. You pair him with Sheldon Rankins or, uh, or BJ Hill for first and second down. On pass rushing downs, holy hell, what could you do? You can then take Jerzon. You can have Jerzon Newton. Next to Rankins? Uh, with, with Sheldon Rankins rushing Murphy the passer. Murphy and Trey? Murphy oh, and Trey. It's, well, it's, also, you said, where do those snaps come from, yeah. right? Well, like, that's the common question because people think, like, oh, this is just bad and we just have our starters out there, right? Yeah. Like, oh. if we're talking about the edge, so total snaps on defense, the Bengals had 1,089 snaps mm-hmm. played by Dax Hill last year. Sam Hubbard played 713 snaps. There's 400 snaps that he didn't play oh, yeah. at edge spot. Trey Hendrickson, 742. There's another 300. And they've been Zach healthy, Carter, too. Who we probably don't want seeing the field Just played why. 500 snaps last season. DJ Reader uh, played 535. So you have over a thousand snaps just from the interior there from guys you don't want to see. 287 for Josh Chapo. Like there, right there, is 1,200 snaps that you can give to your defensive yes. linemen. So you're sitting here saying, like, where do these defensive the thing, tackles play? The thing play? with the there. defensive line too is like, you know, you know, we struggled to do this. We struggled to do that all on the defensive line. You know what helps that? It was the same thing with the punter. Competition breeds success. Fresh yeah, bodies, right. staying fresh is critical in the trenches. And last year, we couldn't, our players, they'd have to be on the field. That's why Trey would get worn down. All these people would, you know, kind of look just so tired because they are. They're doing everything. And now we can have, they have so many bodies that allow people to stay fresh and make impact plays, not only in the fourth quarter of week one, but in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. Yes. Too. Like, and, and that's the point. I'm going to be honest. You have BJ Hill and Sheldon Rankins. What if one of them goes down? What do you do? And for me, you're setting yourself up for success. You got Newton and Sweat. I love this because now I'm not even questioning my defense tackle room. No. If you're heading into the Super Bowl or into the playoffs with Carter as your defensive tackle, your starting defensive tackle, that is not a recipe right. for success. If I have to thrust Tavondre Sweat into a starting role or you know into playing a lot more snaps, I'm okay yeah. with it. You got Newton, you got Rankins, and here's BJ the beautiful Hill. thing for the future. Mm-hmm. Jerzon Newton, Tavondre Sweat next to each other. Miles Murphy. But, but here's for one cheap. thing. For, for cheap. cheap. And here's one thing we're not talking about, guys. Yes. Here's one thing we're not talking about, right? When the time comes, right? And you know, you know who's gonna hate playing, you know, this what the Bengals did with the defensive line room? Opposing offensive linemen. Yes. You the Ravens, me, the Steelers, when you, when you, the Browns. You, wanna tell, you mean to tell me when you when those guys get worn out and they think they finally got this guy's number. Another guy comes in and now they got big old Tavondre Sweat walks in the line. <laughs> yeah, like, boys. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> like, now you can run some of those uh, exotic type of fronts that Lou likes to run, man. It, it, it's I like what we did. Yes. Last, I don't. Last thing yeah, I wanted to say yeah, about the sweat yeah. pick because I see people have reservations about trading that fourth, and I, they can tell you, I am the biggest proponent of trading back, accumulating swings, getting more tickets at the lottery, darts at the darts to throw at the dartboard, whatever metaphor you want to mm-hmm. use, right, or whatever analogy. But in this instance, despite trading that fourth round pick. We wanted to get another top 100 player, right? As opposed to waiting 20 or 30 picks and seeing what you get there at the next fourth round spot. You still added nine guys to this roster. Mm-hmm. And we had guys as far as the fifth and sixth round and Tanner Bordellini or Isaiah Davis that we feel can make this roster and have an impact right now. So yeah. you still get seven or eight, like five, six, seven guys that you feel confident are going to make this roster and contribute in some way. So that fourth round pick, sure, it'd be nice. Yeah. But – there's only so many musical or chairs in the musical chairs game, right? Yeah. Someone's going to be the odd man out. And sure, you want to get to camp. You want to have good guys. And the competition will sort that out. But I don't think it was an egregious waste of assets to yep. trade up no. in that instance. Because we said no to trading up in the second. Yes. Because how, how yeah. many picks we would have to give up. J- yeah. So just to be honest with you guys, the NFL draft, it is very rare that you come out of the draft two years down the road and have four plus quality starters. In my opinion... You are leaving this draft with, I'm looking at one, let's just say for the sake of it, one of Tanner and Zach Frazier is going to be a very good interior offensive lineman. And you got both of these guys. I'm super confident. So I think as a lock, 
you've got three guys in two years that I'm looking at as starting quality yeah. starters. That can be foundational yeah. players for you yes. as you transition from a yeah. offensive line that is getting older yeah. and going to be free agents, and, and, like he and, says. And another thing about the argument, too, of like, you know, feeling like we wasted the assets to move up for sweat is we walked into this draft with the opportunity to have four top 100 picks. You know what we ended with? Four top 100 picks. Yeah. Right. So instead of having a first, second, and two late thirds as our top 100 picks, now we have a first, two seconds, and a third. You know, so yeah. yes, we, we traded back assets in the later rounds, but we moved up to get even better top 100 assets than we would have walked away with in the first place. 100%. So like, yes, I understand we might have – missed out on some some back-end talent or some more roster fillers. Maybe we would have grabbed a corner. We would have maybe grabbed that receiver. But you know what? Now now we got the best nose tackle in the draft. We got a guy that can help us beat the Browns, that can help us beat the Ravens. You know what I mean? Instead of but potentially a flyer or a depth piece. Now we have a legit, true starter out of position for the next four years. Tanner Bordellini. Okay. Other other thing I just Agreed. really got to say real quick, because people are not getting that Tavondre Sweat is not just a nose tackle. People are upset that we traded up for just a nose tackle. And he so, played. Oh, for, so what if we did? Okay. <laughs> no, 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 not even that. Right now, he is not just a nose tackle. Stop, guys. Stop this. Like, stop this narrative. I don't know where it came from. He is very large. That doesn't mean he just plays nose tackle. Out of all his snaps, over 500 snaps last year, 57 came head up or on the shoulder of the center, the zero or one technique, the nose tackle spot. You know where he played 400 of his 500 some odd snaps in the B gap in between the left tackle and the left Which guard. Which was also his highest graded position right. too. Right, so he is not just a nose tackle. Byron Murphy played more nose tackle than he did by at least double the amount, almost triple. So let's stop with the nose tackle narrative. If you don't like the picker, you don't like the player, that's fine. Yeah. But it isn't because he's just a nose tackle. That is... Could not be farther from the truth. He has that pass rush upside mm -hmm. that you said, like yes. the Christian Wilkins, the, the Quinn and Williams, the Dexter Lawrence, these guys who are nose tackle bodies but have quick feet, quick violent hands. Devondre Sweat doesn't move. Look how like much those guys just got pounds. paid, man. These guys like... are getting paid $25 million. So, again, we want to talk about being cheap. You now have basically what's the value of an edge rusher position, cost controlled for four years, and now you got five years of Jason yes. Newton. So and when the, you're paying these other well, guys, you know what the, the issue here with this draft is. For people, yes, that we made no sexy picks. That's what I was yeah, just there's, no, there's, no receiver, there's no receiver, no early tight end. There's 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 no there's first no, round no, offensive tackle. Yeah, yeah, there's no sexy yeah. pick here. So uh, it's like, just so you guys know, uh, you know, I did try to draft a wide receiver in the second round. I did. Somebody we said did. Well, <laughs> we didn't draft. I did. There was a guy that that I wanted, but I understand. This is how – guess what? Every mock draft will be different. Yeah, we might Every draft four receivers next time. is going to be right. different. There's going to be, there's going to be times where, we, where I might say, you know what? F it. Let's, let's draft a tackle at 18 or let's draft the receiver yeah. at 18. Let's I have no how, idea depending on how the board shapes. That's the point of I even this. consider potentially trading back in for Brian Thomas, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to do things that – because I'm in the mood – I'm in the mode of, of trying to compete at all costs. Yep. I'm not upset with, with this draft. It's not a sexy pick, but I think it's a – I think it's a draft that gets you where you want to be. I think yes. this is a draft we've been missing for so many years, man. Yes. Like these are positions that are going to be expensive, that are premium positions. And these are the positions we're not going to be able to afford to pay for the next four, five, six years when we're paying yeah. Jamar Chase a billion dollars, Joe Burrow a billion dollars, maybe mm -hmm. T. Higgins. Like these are positions that are going to be premium spots that we've already lacked, that it's mm -hmm. going to be expensive. This is going to be the bone, the, the meat of your team yep. when you're having your, your future Super Bowl yeah. runs. And, and yeah, I, I mean, I see some people still talking about the sweat thing. I'll be honest. The reason why I also like it is we waited until to see how the board fell. If sweat would have been gone, we would have been okay. Let's just see how the picks fell. Right. If he was there at the beginning of the third round, 1,000%, I'm, I'd rather do this, trade up here, than take him at 49. We had because 17 picks. I we think weren't comfortable with that. Th I would have rather taken Frazier. I would have rather taken a star wide receiver like a Burton at pick 49 than taking Sweat at 49. Yeah, but no, I thought there was no shot. He to Andre Sweat was going to make it to us in the third round. Was, yeah. You're no. about to have multiple teams in front of you that have – Interior defensive line Arizona, needs. like but you again, said, it's premium. I want to go back to people saying things that are just not true about yeah. Sweat, where first it was the nose tackle thing. Now it's, well, he's not that effective of a pass rusher. Okay, he had two sacks. Sure, that was not great. But he did have – he was tied for 10th among all qualifying interior defensive linemen and quarterback hurries mm -hmm. and pressures, which forces quarterbacks out of the pocket, yep. out of structure, mm -hmm. limits what you can do as a receiver because you're mm -hmm. taking away half of the field now when you do that unless you're Pat Mahomes and can throw across your body 20 yards the yeah. other way. And then in other pass rush wins that didn't result in a pressure, he was third. So, like, 
Did he not have the sacks? Yes. But is he still getting hurries and flushing quarterbacks out of the pocket or putting pressure on them? Absolutely. And pressure, I know people are so concerned with finishing when it comes to offensive linemen. Well, he didn't pancake the guy. Defensive pressure turned Tom Brady into an Andy Dalton level quarterback. And if you don't think that's valuable, you're playing a different game because there's teams out here that are paying guys like a Brandon Graham, because even though they had six sack years, they were top five, top 10 in pressures every year. And that matters. And and with, with sweat too, like half of the, half of the fun and the appeal is, if he can draw two defenders, because he's 6'4", 370 now pounds. Now you're one-on-one with Jason Newton. Now Newton's one-on-one. Now Murphy's you're one-on-one, one-on-one. Trey's Henderson. one-on-one. Like, so, uh, right. so I can have zero career sacks for all I care. If he's drawing right. double teams and opening up all these one-on-ones, he's doing it'll, the it'll 100% be worth the pick. Right. Yeah, I feel good about this draft. Yeah. What, are your, what are your final no, thoughts, Daniel? Final thoughts. The way I view this, what I would have, I think looking back hindsight, and this is probably just the, the sexiness looking. I would rather I, – I want a running back or a wide receiver in the first four rounds. And that's just – obviously, that's but not – what do you, what do you swap we, we lose that oh, with the so, trade-up. So, yes. You know, and, we and, lose and, that with the trade-up. And, and that's what I think um, – looking back at I really love the interior offensive lineman depth. That's where probably Zach Frazier, yes, was one of the best players on the board. I like having the depth here. I think they both are starters. Um, two years and then the christian jones one i get that it's a tight you know uh an offensive tackle that we've got to address the tackle position um can i be honest with you yeah if i get to the third round yes um blake fisher is my is my pick if i'm the Bengals, right yeah yes i'm looking at adding a tackle blake fisher is my pick yes and he's one i feel very very good about Mm -hmm. he's a guy that you feel really really good about you saw the upside that he had in the running department and pass department um i think that he's gonna be a really really uh solid player Unfortunately, he wasn't there when it was time to pick. Yeah, round three. So he went. You had that's where you had to force a spot yeah. where you you can't leave the draft. And it's not like we drafted a bad player, in my opinion, no, either. No. I'm a big Christian Jones, Jones guy. When I'm out of the whole reason why we picked right. him, like I, I it's a solid we were, pick. I think stuff. if we had to pick one reach pick, mm-hmm. I think that would be the one. Yes. Yeah. But it's one that you're like, all right, it was a reach, right? And it's like a reach in the pick. fourth round is not as egregious as a reach in the second round of the first. And, round, right? and it's also because it's the situation we put ourselves in because we didn't take Mims at. In round one, and that's I'm okay with that. And that's not even saying again, Trent Brown is a one year deal, and that's not even saying that you don't come back next year and say, Hey, we're gonna take an yeah. offensive tackle on this draft. Yeah. Like that that is a ways. possibility that we we can't rule out. The tackle yeah. future does not have to be yeah, solved like, yes. right now. And, and real real Jones quick, if you guys are watching this, make sure drop down your grades for this draft. What you guys think? Who is you guys' favorite pick? Who is you guys' least favorite pick? Drop down who you guys liked. Uh, we want to hear from you guys, but continue look. No, I mean just just about the whole draft in general. Like, you know, I really like it. You know, yes. we a lot of the guys I'm I'm pretty high on. We selected here. I love the Theo Johnson value there too. You know, it is it's it's a very non kind of Bengals draft. I I feel like, but like I said, it's just something that is so it's needed. Trash heavy. You need it's so the needed, the, the youth man. And the like, and you know, obviously, you know, if we don't trade up for Sweat, you know, we probably see a running back. We probably see a receiver. Yes. You know, and then the people's grades are automatically different. But I still love. The first two picks are awesome to me. I love Newton. I love Frazier. I love the interior presence that we've that how, we've how developed. How tired are we of all of the the Deontay Smith, the Christian Westerman, the Hakeem Adenogy, and then going to the other side of the ball where we've had projects in the back end where it's been Jay Tufele and um, and uh, Josh Tupo and Zach Carter and all these other guys. And it's like right, and it's like how many of these guys have we seen the project guys coming through? We need new blood. We, we got to get know, something you know, younger, you, cheaper, more athletic. You know what I, what I think about, because this, you think about the draft again, you, you pick free agency for your needs, you mm-hmm. draft for your future. I think that uh, one of Zach Frazier or Tanner Bordellini, if I'm picking, I think Zach Frazier beats out Cordell Bolson. Yes. Left guard spot. I would, I think, I think that's a very realistic possibility. And, and I think you feel very, very good about your spot. If Tanner, uh, if, uh, I would keep saying Tanner Hudson, this, this <laughs> but if uh, Ted Karras gets hurt, yep. you can slot Tanner Bordellini or Zach Frazier yep. over to that spot because yep. right, right, right now his back, your backup center is who? Trey Hill. Trey Hill. Like, I mean, I like Trey Hill. Going back to projects that yeah. have not really worked yeah. out as well as they. Sure, Trey Hill is fine, but mm-hmm. that's unless he plays better. Right. Like, is anyone feeling great about that for more than eight? Malik game was or two? so excited when we drafted him. That I remember how oh, excited Trey you were. I love Trey, yeah. and I still like Trey Hill. Yeah, because yeah. when he has been thrusted into a he's starting been, spot he's been good he's been decent yeah and so like I, I i like i like the draft that we have um i know that this wasn't the sexiest guys and i promise you we will get to that point where there'll be some sexy picks, oh yeah I promise we'll, you we'll that. put some wild ones but out all there. in all we gotta feel good about where we are yeah mm-hmm. we gotta feel good about where we are yep. we gotta yeah. feel good because 
you you have the Christian Jones pick there for the just in case factor. You did bring back Cody mm -hmm. Ford, who is your tackle, right? Right. He mm -hmm. Cody Ford is the backup right tackle right now, basically. Yeah. He's being looked at as that, right? right. So like that's nervous. Should, that makes me nervous. Hundred yeah. percent. But guess what? This draft now makes you feel better about your interior spot. Right. Uh, you still have depth on the offensive line. You just mm -hmm. add it to that depth. You still can yeah. bring back a Matt Sharp. Like I said, too. next year, four yeah. offensive linemen are free agents. That is a lot of bodies to replace, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, sure. And if you have to have a draft like this, so now next year you can draft whatever the hell you want. You don't want to go into whenever the hell you want. Three spots like, like the offensive yeah, line. Yeah, now you next year you can draft a running back in the first round. A tight end is like, you can do whatever the hell you want because we address the trenches and we truly don't have to worry about protecting Joe Burrow. We don't have to worry about the defensive line. We can just go out there and pick freely, pick fun, pick exciting. Right. Like you sample, we see you. Like this. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the Tavondre Sweat. You know, talk man. Hey, we're we're happy, we're trying to interact with you guys. You know, this is nothing personal. It's just an opportunity for us to kind of battle back against narratives that 100%. we think are unfair to players. You know, we we like the discussion with you guys. We thank you for tuning in. Thank you for making this so special. Hundred percent. So we we appreciate you guys there. Just know it's all love, and we're we're all in the heat of the moment. We're all yeah. passionate, right? Absolutely, man. And you know, this war room was off to a great is has been off kicked off to a great start. Um, we were been live for about an hour and forty minutes. Mm. Woo! That tells you that we're in the heat of draft season. We spent half of it picking in the seventh round, right? <laughs> 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 and it, it, and it was a beast. Awesome. It was Hall, of Hall of Famer. Game changer. I like it. Whatever. <laughs> but uh guys, we want to thank you guys so much for tuning in for another episode of State of the Jungle War Room presented by First Star Logistics. If you guys could do us a favor, give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on post notifications. So you guys don't miss when we go live or upload content from the First Star Logistics Studio. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'm looking forward to next week's. Apparently, we might have a guest joining us next week on the show. Ooh. We'll keep it under wraps to who that guest might be. But just know everybody that we do add to the war room is going to uh, bring value to the table. And you know what? I think we're going to do a little bit different. We'll let the guest choose the first pick. Who the I like it. Okay. Yep. I like we'll it. We'll change it up so you guys don't get tired of our voice. But – until next time, guys.